Welcome, welcome everyone to Inner Beauty TV. Hello everyone to the Inner Beauty TV. I'm your host, Nicole Michelle, founder and femininity mentor for the Inner Beauty Movement. We're all about helping women reconnect with their power, their essence, their core, all of the juicy stuff that makes them beautiful and makes them feminine and reconnected, reconnecting them with their feminine power, their essence, their core while simplifying the pathway to marriage. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, something that you'd be interested in, definitely give us a follow. We'd love to have you a part of our tribe. Welcome to all of you joining me live and to those of you on the replay, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for sharing, liking the stream and subscribing. Wake the algorithm up if you can, ladies. Those of you watching me live on YouTube, hit the like button so the algorithm knows we're back. We tried the four o'clock slot and my analytics said that you all are online. <laughs> but I think you all forgot about me at four o'clock. And one o'clock just works best for me and it does seem to do a little bit better in terms of overall numbers. So we're here at 1 p.m. Plus I wanna get you through your job. So a lot of you, if you're on the East Coast, you're finishing up lunch and you're back at your desk now so we can really chit chat if you're at home with the little ones they're cleaning up they're probably down for a little after lunch nap so you have time to chit chat with me today i'm going to make it all about you we are going into valentine's day and i have something planned my husband and i have things planned for next week so i'm going to be taking next week off but i thought going into the lover's day with the same spirit, I thought that I would make this stream all about you all. And it's been a long time since I had nothing but a QA session. So I want you all to feel comfortable. If you wanna jump up here and chit chat with me real time, you're more than welcome to. If you're in the chat on YouTube, you can send me an email with your question and just put anonymous. I, I usually don't tell people's names. Um, I kind of keep, uh, keep people in the dark about who's sending me things. But if you send me a message, I think I have some questions on YouTube. I have some on IG. You can DM me if you have my IG. Don't put them on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, please DM me uh, so I don't have to jump back all these places. And I will check my email. Um, somebody mentioned a post on IG. They're supposed to be sending me that. So we'll kind of talk on that. And if you're on the other platforms and you um, want to ask me a question, I'll try to remember, but I think I'm going to close those other platforms out before we get to the Q&A part of the live. So uh, if you want your question answered, I prefer that you be on YouTube in one specific area. I guarantee you the questions that are going to be asked more than one woman has that question. <laughs> so I assure you, and I have no problems. I will be here as long as you're asking me questions. I love to interact with my audience. That is the fun part of my job. So ladies, let's get into it. So for those of you who are new to the channel, our three pillars is faith, family, and femininity. We're all about fostering and nurturing our relationship with God our family, nurturing our relationship with our family and nurturing our femininity to its wholeness. That's what we are about on this channel. And so that you know that I am a Christian and so most of my teaching, well, all of them <laughs> will have a Christian ethos to it. I don't run from that and I don't make that a secret. I just want you to know that um, I want to be your Naomi, like Naomi guided Ruth. So that's what we do over here. And I would love to have you shout out to my YouTube moderators are the best in the business. So I ex expect the numbers to be kind of low today because some people might be expecting me to go live at four. And what I found is this is a better slot. So, and I've been doing one o'clock for kind of like years and I'm almost done with other projects. So I intend to amp it up on YouTube and be more present more i think back in the day i did monday through wednesday so it might look something like that but i have some projects that have to get done first before i can do youtube that much because youtube is just literally just talking for hours so i have to get my work done <laughs> before i can do that and when i do 
I see your questions, baby. I got you. So when I do, um, you, I, I think you'll enjoy, and I think I'll enjoy my presence on YouTube. Tony has been telling me I need to do more YouTube. And I'm like, I have stuff to do. <laughs> so, um, once that's out of the way and I have some systems in place and everything's working, we will get to chit chat more often and I can speak more on current events and trending topics and I can do more of that, but you know, when, when I'm here more often. So let's talk about things. I have reviews in from the, my first batch of students and the good girl method. The reviews are good. Thank you so much. I knew it would be, I knew this is what you all wanted. And I had been praying. I was like, I don't want people to misconstrue the good girl method <laughs> because when I tell you it's, I don't want to say it's controversial, but it, it might be controversial and I, and it's nothing that is manipulative. It's nothing that is, um, any of that other stuff. I think it's just like straightforward. Your mother sitting on the end of the bed, passing on her pearls to you. And that stuff that you don't discuss in front of the family is only discussed with women. And that's the kind of wisdom I'm passing on. For example, I'm going to give you an example of the good girl method. All right, let me give you one. Let me look on my list of stuff here. Oh, 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 okay. This is my favorite one. This is the kind of stuff I teach in the good girl method. All right. By the way, the reviews have been good. So thank you to the ladies that took a chance. They were my guinea pigs. And they took the first batch of the good girl method. And based on the feedback that I'm getting, I'm going to refine the course and put it out for the public and you can buy it whenever you want to. I don't do that launching. Uh, you got to apply for my courses. Look, if you can afford it, buy the course. I don't have time to police all that. I don't have time for that. <laughs> I'm too busy. Look, if you want the course, buy it. I don't believe in launching and it's only available once a year. I don't look, if you want it, it's available. Okay. <laughs> and that's how I do my, um, courses. And so based on the feedback, the ladies liked it. I'm going to refine it and put it in a course and put it up for grabs. But let me give you an example of the good girl method. Um, oh, this is my personal favorite. This is my personal favorite. Um, <clears throat> there has to be a balance between good and bad, right? There has to be a balance between good and bad. So what I mean by that is this. Um, and if you're on the app, you probably have heard me say this before. It just, I didn't tell you it was a good girl method because I didn't know I was going to be make, creating a good girl method. So if you're on the app, you probably have already heard this. <clears throat> but in the good girl method, I refine it. So if you're on the app, that's where you need to be because the good girl method is not on the app, but a lot of stuff, just a lot of stuff to help you elevate your life on every level is there. So the good girl method is a balance between, um, um, and this is just one. It's like over, uh, I want to say it's almost like 20, 30 30 of them, just good tips that you will not hear anywhere else. The balance between good and bad. Here's the thing. A man has no problem marrying a woman with flaws as long as most of her is good. Okay. For example, if uh, you're a good girl, every, I mean, you're a good girl, like, this is the good girl channel. This is, this is our, our hub. This is our headquarters, right? We're good girls, right? But we have a couple of things that is not so good. <laughs> it's like, we might be late or we might curse every now and then, or whatever it is, it's not a deal breaker for men, but it is a serious character flaw. And the men now, mind you, it's not a deal breaker, but it is a serious character flaw. The men look at it like, well, she's mostly good. So I'm okay with that. Now, the flip side is the bad girl looks, the problem with the bad is this. Most women think that 
I'm mostly bad, or she doesn't think she's mostly bad. She may be bad, right? And she has two or three good things, redeeming qualities about her. Let's say she's not the best person. Like she's good, a good person. Like she's a human, but she has a lot of challenges. But she has like two or three redeeming qualities about her. Like she's a good cook or she likes animals or something like that. Men will look at it like, Remember, I told you, ladies, always remember men choose wives logically and emotionally. You cannot rely on just emotion for him to give you a ring. So, or he, for, you know, and the further up, even to get a ring. So what I tell women is this. He can't be with, he can't logically explain or logically rationalize why he should make you number one, make you priority, make you his wife or whatever you want. Because he looks at you, now you're not bad, but he looks at the situation, eh, it's mostly bad. And only two or three good rede redeeming qualities in the prom. The problem with a lot of women, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of women that good girls know already is that they think those two or three redeeming qualities endears her to him. So let's say, for instance, um, She's real promiscuous, but she's got a good heart when it comes to children or she's got a good heart that does it. it, it it's not going to work with a man. It's just not going to work because he's like, OK, she has those redeeming qualities and that's cool, but it's not enough. I can't build a relationship with her because everything else is mostly bad versus this good girl over here. Mostly everything's good, but she cusses every now and then. He's like, well, I mean, I can deal with that because she's mostly good. Does that make sense, ladies? It's good girls have figured this out subconsciously a long time ago. It's just not something we vocalize because we don't think about it. It's just something we just know, look, look, I'm a good girl, but hey, I have some slip ups every now and <laughs> And he goes, well, I mean, you're not that bad. So I'm good with that. And you're, I mean, that's, and by the time you've fed him all the goodness of you, because that's, naturally who you are by the time you show him your character flaws he's like oh that's nothing that's not it's not a deal breaker mind you these are not deal breakers this is not sleeping with his friend this is not you know out here criminality or anything like that these are not deal breaking flaws these are just human flaws and when he sees them he's like oh that's not a big deal versus the other the the flip side of it the bad girl is mostly bad and not enough good. And that's why he throws you back respectfully. That's why he ends the relationship. That's why he's callous with it. That's why he's transactional with it. Cause it's not enough good. Men inherently want a woman to be spiritually better than him, emotionally better than him. They expect it actually, because they think that we have the up with our femininity, with the way women view, uh, the way society views women, they think that we have an up on pretty much everything in life. So they figure she should be ahead of me when it comes to emotional intelligence. She should be ahead of me where she, uh, when it comes to knowing what she wants. She should be ahead of me when it comes to relationships. She should be ahead of me. And if I'm pulling her along, that's problematic because I'm problematic. Me and no where they're problematic. <laughs> That's why a lot of them don't want to get married because they know they're problematic. They know they're problematic. They need the woman to be sort of like the emotional leader and which we are because we're feminine. We nurture, we nurture. We are emotional creatures. We operate from emotions first and then logic. They operate from logic first and then emotion. But when it comes to choosing a wife, they need both and they choose from logic first that's the heaviest part of how he chooses a wife a girlfriend whatever you want to be that's how he uh oh that's how he chooses you so hopefully that helped so when i'm telling you there has to be a balance between good and bad i think on the app i talked about the balance between good and bad and i'm not telling you to go out here and develop your flaws <laughs> You should be working on your flaws, right? But when it comes to becoming a wife and, and so forth and so on, you have to be mostly good, okay? You have to be. It's, it's not an option. You have to be. 
Now, oh, but Nicole, they like those bad girls. Yes, in doses. You're absolutely right. They love bad girls in doses. That's what they don't tell you. That's what in all these conversations, hoes be winning. They love bad girls. They Yes, they do. They love to have romps in the hay and have fun in doses. And the truly unhealthy men attach themselves to these women. And then they will tell you on the back end, it was the worst decision they've ever made. And I'm telling you this out of love so that most, because I know most women look at it, well, I do what I want when I have these two or three redeeming qualities that should endure me. And you're right, it does in doses, in doses. When a man is with you in doses, those two or three things are great about you. Like she's good in bed or she's a great cook or um, she knows how to dress or she makes good money and all of those things. Yes, that's good in doses. But when it comes to wanting to keep you for the long term, that's when it gets murky. So if you've never heard that before, that's what's in the good girl method. And I'm pretty sure they'll say, yeah, we've heard that. You haven't. Because I know nobody says you have to have mostly good and just a little bit of bad. They tell you, yeah, you have to be all good. And even I know that's not even possible. Nobody is perfect and nobody is holy and nobody is, right? We strive to be the best that we can do. But as humans, we're, all, we're, gonna, we're always gonna have one or two things, maybe three things that we need to work up. And what I want women to do is not strive to be perfect, but strive to be the best person you can be. That means if you have to write out a list of the good things about you, the good qualities about you and the bad qualities about you, put it on paper, put it on paper, the good qualities about you and the bad qualities about you. And if that good quality list does not outlast that long, that bad quality, it's got to switch and the, that good qual quality list has to be longer, period. Otherwise, you can listen to me till you're blue in the face. You can pay me thousands of dollars. You can pay anybody else. You can listen to their channel till you're blue in the face. You can follow whoever you want to follow. But you will never get the ring until that qu good quality list is way longer than the, the flaw list. That has nothing to do with your mentor, your coach, how much you paid, how, how old you are, your race. If that good girl, I'm sorry, that, that good quality list is not longer than the flaws list, it's a lot of work to be done. And unfortunately, a lot of women figure this out later in life. They figure out, okay, either let me find a man that accepts me where I am and accepts you know, the lopsidedness or let me elevate my life, fix those things I need to work on the inner, the inner part of me, my presentation, my communication, all of those things. If I work those things up, it's not about being a good girl necessarily. I named it good girl method because that's what we are. We are good people in our core. We get overlooked for the ostentatious women, we get overlooked for the hoes, we get overlooked, we get passed over all the time. And they say, oh, it's because you're plain. Oh, because you know, it's not. It's because, yeah, we could put on makeup and look like everybody else, but we choose not to because that's not who we are. We're thinking about how is our daughters going to look at us? How is our sons going to view women after coming in contact with us? They're thinking about their grandchildren. We are thinking about our grandchildren and our great grands. When they look in our family heirlooms and see us, what will they see? Will they be proud of us? Or will they go, oh wow, grandma was turning up. Oh, okay. We think that that's cool, but will they think that's cool? Like a good woman is always thinking about the future. It's not always, I do what I want. I do what I think. And that's like in college, <laughs> like that's your phase to get all of that stuff out. But at some time, at some point in time, you have to mature and a man cannot marry a woman who never matures to a point that says, you know what? What I do does affect other people. It's not about, well, it's it's my life. I do what I want. It's my truth. I do it. It's not always about you. Sometimes it is about your daughters. Sometimes it is about your sons and it is about your husband and his presentation. And please don't tell me you want to marry well and you don't literally, 
You literally think I can do what I want. I don't care what other people think. If you've ever uttered that, and that's another thing on the good girl method. Let me add that actually, because I just thought about that off the top. <laughs> Let me add that one because I'm going to fine tune that one. If you are walking around saying, I don't care what people think, you are not ready for a, a, a very successful man because that's how he became successful because what people think means he doesn't make money. If people don't think the right thing about his, thank you. I see your email. If people don't think the right thing about his presentation, his business, his business model, um, how he carries himself, his person, he doesn't make money. So you think he wants to get married to a woman who doesn't care, which brings me to the next point about dark femininity. I made a post on IG asking my supporters or people that pay attention to my, my stories, which if you're not following me on IG, that's probably where you need to be because every now and then I'll throw some really good stuff in there. And all of my good stuff is on the app. I'm not going to front, but every now and then I'll throw some really good stuff on my stories. And I wanted to ask a question about who supports dark femininity. And I've only heard that from, and I'm just going to be real respectfully. I've only heard that from black women who teach femininity. And I've only heard that from women who are about the finesse. I'm sorry. That's just what it is. I've, I've only heard that from those people. I've all the books, all the major publications that I've read about femininity, um, even my book, um, all of the things we've never talked about. Those books have never talked about a dark femininity. They've talked about women and being hurt and operating from a hurt place, but never named it dark femininity or any sort of thing. The only thing I could think of was a woman that's hurt. Because you cannot talk about femininity and a woman's emotions without talking about how we have wounds and how we carry those wounds and how they care and how they operate and how they show up in relationships and show up in life. Right. I just want people to know that that is not a healthy place to operate from. It's just not. I will never encourage you. Dears. I look at you all like my daughters, my sisters, my cousins, my goddaughters friends, whatever you need me to be. I look at you like that and I cannot in good conscience teach you how to operate from the bad part of you because that would make me a hypocrite, number one. And number two, how can you expect good things coming from a bad place, okay? Nothing good can come from bad, a bad place. Now, some things can work out for the good. The Bible says all things work out for the good for them that love the Lord. That's because he's hovering over them and making sure things work out. But they love him and their intentions were good and they weren't out sinning and doing bad things. You have to put things in context. You can't expect a man to give his all and love you when your intentions from the get go was bad. Nothing good can come from that, ladies. I'm never going to teach you. To, I'm going to teach you how to get a man fair and square. He'll never know what hit him when he comes across you. I have one client and she knows who she is. Uh, I think this is the one. We're excited. Um, I would never teach her how to manipulate him. She doesn't have to. She got him fair and square. He's going to voluntarily give her that ring. I think it'll come before, uh, uh, before Christmas. He's going to voluntarily get it. No manipulation, no schemes, no games. She got a fair and square. No lies. Now, she went through the good girl method, um, but she didn't even need that to pull him in. I mean, she, I mean, he's, he's, he's into her. He's falling in love. Like, legitimately, you don't need to manipulate a man to get you to fall in love. I keep telling you all, dear hearts, you do not need a man. Seriously, a man. That's the easiest thing to get is a man. You do not need to manipulate him, cast no spells, read no book. Girl, a man, that's the easiest thing to get. And if you trick him to get him, just understand someone else that has a better trick and a better game can take him from you. 
I'm gonna let that sit right there. Um, also, those of you who are aspiring socialites and um, all of those things, all that stuff is in my IG stories. And to take it to the next level is the app. Shout out to everybody on the app. Um, there's another thing I wanted to talk about: hate on trad wives influencers. Um, versus the stay-at-home girlfriends. There is a trend going on. I don't know if you ladies know about it. Let me pull this up. I think this is it. Nope, that's not it. Um, Here it is. A stay-at-home girlfriend. This was an article done in Business Insider. And this is why I need to do more shows so that we could get right to the topic. But anyway, <laughs> the Business Insider just did an article and you can see the whole thing um, there on IG. You can pull up the article on Business Insider. A stay-at-home girlfriend says she's living her dream life. My money is my money and his money is our money. And on his face, it sounds really good, right? It sounds really, really good. Here's the thing, though. Um, <clears throat> when you do that, he can easily dispose of you. And your work history is spotty. You have no money. Um are, are you saving money? What are you doing with the money? And this is how I look at this whole girlfriend situation. Because I always look at situations. How does this benefit or hurt a woman? And I told you all, I'm not a fan of living together. And this is why. Because men can all, men, I, no matter what, until he says I do, he has a foot out the door. Never forget that. If he hasn't said I do, I don't care if he's living with you, kids, I'm speaking from the heart and respectfully, if he has not said I do, which means he does not plan to go anywhere until he does that, he has one foot out the door and legally he can, there's nothing holding him there. And if you have a child, he might be holding to the child. He's responsible for the child monetarily, but he has no responsibility to you. He can leave today tomorrow and put you out please understand ladies this is how men get over men don't get over in marriage that's why they don't want to get married <laughs> the men that are up to no good now traditional men want to get married but just because he's paying your bills as a boyfriend does not make him um traditional and provider he is not he's imitating a thorough man he's irritating um he's imitating a traditional man you're playing house and he's playing. And there's nothing to keep him from playing with you. And it doesn't protect you in the event you all split up. And I've seen these cases where the babies come out of this. The babies come out of this. And then you're looking like, wait a minute, I need my child support. And as a girlfriend, you're not entitled to alimony. You're not entitled to anything. And what a lot of women do when they get with super rich men, like athletes and all of those sorts of things, and they have these babies on the side, <clears throat> what they try to do is make up for the fact that they're not married. So they try to cipher alimony through child support. We see it all the time. Every time an athlete has a baby, his baby mom goes to court, tries to get all of this money through child support. It's really lowbrow on both sides. That's why I tell you to all sh always shoot better than an athlete. Always, 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 always. When he gets out of the league, more often than not, 70% of them end up broke anyway. Um, so why? Unless you're going to help him reinvest his money um, and so that he can build that money and so that he's still wealthy when he gets out of, out of the league. Most of them spend all their money, mismanage it, <clears throat> and they end up broke anyway. So why? Go for the hedge fund guy. Go. For, he's always going to make money. I mean, that's what he does for a living. He works with money. Go, go, go with men who have worked hard to get their money, not just off their looks and physical prowess. Like no shade to rappers and athletes, and I think you all can do better than that. They're low hanging fruit. They literally pick up anybody from the club and make that their girlfriend. There's, there's no rhyme or reason. Nobody's special. I see your, I see your questions. I'm gonna get to them. There is no rhyme or re rhyme or reason or anything like that. Anybody can become their girlfriend. You didn't work. To, all you had to do was be cute which means you can easily be replaced by the next cute girl. Why? Go make that man marry you so that in the event he gets froggy and he wants to jump away, 
you will follow my advice and get 80% from him. Not, we don't do 50-50 divorces. Oh no, we do 80%. Since you want to leave, no, you don't get to take the bag. I have children. This mortgage, you leaving me? I have to downsize my life. Like, you're telling me I'm going to die alone because I'm a single mother now. You're telling me I'm less attractive on the market now. So, therefore, I need to up that from 50% to maybe 75%. That makes me feel better. So, well, stop telling me. Stop telling women. And this is what women need to say. Stop telling me that I'm unattractive after you leave me. What kind of crap is that? Well, if I'm unattractive after you leave me, then I'm going to need 75%. How about that? <laughs> I bet you'll change that new. Oh, I'm going to die alone? Well, if I'm going to die alone, I need more money. Because um, <laughs> it takes money to take care of these kids. What are you talking about? I'm going to need more money. Well, anyway, I'm just saying shoot shoot for hire. If that's the best you can do as an athlete, then, hey, that's better than most women. But if if you can do better, shoot better. Get the hedge fund. Don't do rappers. They why drug problems all kinds of stuff going on go higher than that go uh <clears throat> the blue chip guys you can do it with my help you absolutely can you can absolutely do better i think a lot of you shortchange yourself i see it all the time regardless of race you all do it it's not just black girls all of y'all do that latina girls white girl all y'all do that for some reason y'all stop at the rappers i know that some of them some of them some be attractive athletes attractive and so i i get it but go with men who know how to multiply their money who value money and they're not going to make stupid decisions with money so that as soon as they get out of the league and there's no more attention on them, they're flat broke. And now you have to go get regular jobs. That defeats the purpose. <laughs> and celebrities that, that you know, um, I know somebody mentioned Simone, bless her heart. I, I have to do a special stream about that one. But um. <laughs> Because on one hand, I like what she's doing. Like she's she's happily married and she's telling the world, this is who I love. And on the other hand, we want to make sure that it's not just us. We want to make sure that he loves us the same level, so to speak. So anyway, um, one example I wanted to use before we move on is Kenya Moore. Shout out to her. I've always like Kenya and she was on the breakfast club and this is about the only time I listened to them at ever, but, um, but she was on there and it just released today. And she was talking about her divorce with Mark and ladies, when you get, and, and she is, I think she married, I don't want to say down, but I think she married lateral and I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. Cause I really don't know, but, she made it clear that money was leaving her bag and going to his bag. So I guess that's marrying down. Ladies, don't do that if you don't have to. Because what's going to happen is you're going to have an increase. I told you all this last year. You're going to see an increase of men marrying women for money. You're going to see that. Men are up here talking about prize. She needs to give me money. She needs to go 50-50 especially if you all that are successful, you're going to see an increase of men doing that. Just regular average everyday women, because some social media people have told these men that they are the prize and that women ought to be glad to have them. So they're walking around patting their chest. Like she ought to be glad that I'm paying any kind of attention to her. And that's how they're approaching relationships now, ladies. Now, they don't come to you with that energy necessarily, but they're thinking it. And this is why they rush to spaces that kind of gave women the business because they wanted you to get told and they wanted you to be humbled. Oh, you with that degree. Oh, you're a world traveler, speak several languages and you're beautiful. So what? You ought to be glad to have me. That is going to, you're going to see an increase of that. And I'm telling you, that's what happened with my girl, Kenya um, Moore, for those of you who want to Google her. So um, you're going to see an increase of that. What I want to pass on to you, though, is my critique of her is that 
And this is a, a case study or whatever that you ladies can take, take from it because nobody is 100% innocent in these, these types of relationships. So when you get a successful man, you just period divorce is kind of crass to talk about the intricacies of your divorce before it's final especially if you're in the public eye especially if you are a socialite both of you are visible in society and the community it's really in poor taste to discuss the intricacies of your divorce the only people that I discussed the intricacies of my divorce to this day was my mother. May she rest in heaven. It died with her. She took it to the grave with her. I did not put it out on public. I didn't put it on social media. Back then it was, I don't know, Black Planet or something like that or AOL. I don't know. I didn't put it on social media that I was going through a divorce. Many times I didn't even put it on social media. I was going through a breakup. I went through a huge breakup before I met Tony. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. Uh, that's just who I am. I'm just private. But it, it's just in good, it's, it's in bad taste to discuss your divorce, in, especially if he's a public figure, you're a public figure. Please keep in mind, your children are going to read this later down the road. And I don't know if our sensitivity has kind of declined. And I'm not you like mad at Kenny. She's doing what she has to do. I like her. Like, I'm not shading her one bit. I, I actually like Kenya. Um, but ladies, can we, this is what discourages successful men from getting married in, this, in the first place, especially to women that don't come from their world. Because what the, the first thing we do, we put everything on blast on IG. Oh, I'm staying in this hotel. I ate this food. I've never eaten snails. I've never eaten. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm at this, this, you know, that's this as soon as what we do. We can't just move in silence and just show up married. Like we have to let everybody know every single, we have to let them know we're, on, we're in first class. We have to let them know that we're on a PJ, right? We have to let them know that we're on this private, but we have to let everybody know that he just brought us a $250,000 necklace. That's not, we also have to know all his dirty secrets. Like we have to do that. Like do really now, in the case of Cassie, which I'm going to talk about in another stream, I don't want to ruin the energy here with that, but just understand it's just in poor taste. Unless it's a crime that's been committed, it's in poor taste to discuss why you broke up with somebody and why you're divorcing someone. It's just in poor taste, ladies. All right. It's not an elegant move. And another point I want to raise about her, and then we're going to move on. And not just her, but just women in general. As women get older and Nicole, I've played by the rules. I didn't have babies out of wedlock. I'm still beautiful. I'm professional. I'm wealthy. What more can a man ask for? So what happens is they get antsy and then they marry down, which in her case, I would consider it. I don't know if it was settling or what. I don't know. I don't know because I don't know. But a lot of women you're going to see making these quick judgments. I need to get married. I want to have a baby. And they're going to instantly regret it because they rushed into it instead of taking their time. And I don't know if it's society pushing women. Hey, you're reaching a certain age. You got to have. I don't know. This is why I tell you ladies to decide. Do you want children and how you're going to do that? Do you want marriage? Because now is the time, this is the fork in the road time to do that. Now you can always have a baby. You can have a baby at 55 if you want to pay the fertility people to help you do it. You can get married at any age. People are getting, I had a client that got married and she was like in her early 50s, right? So I am, I'm, and I just got married, remarried and um, I'm in my 40s. So I cannot hypocritically sit here and say that it can't be done. What I'm telling you is it gets hard. I'm speaking from experience. It gets hard. I don't want you to be making these rash decisions because you want to get it. You, you haven't had a baby yet. Um, you want to get married. I don't want you to wait so long to where you're just hopping on the next best thing. And I was going to talk about this, but I think I'm going to do this in another live, but there was an article, Alex, Clark did a 
you a YouTube video on men are leaving the dating world. And I think this is important to talk about going into the topic because I'm going to talk about the topic next, but she talked about it. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me see if I can find it. I promise you, I have this stuff all set up. And then when I go live, I can't find it. But she talked, here it is. She talked about, it's an article, hold on. And she talked about how men are leaving the dating pool. Here it is. It's on the fp.com. The dating pool dropouts. And basically what it's saying is the men are opting out of the dating pool because they feel like they don't make enough money and they don't look good. Has the sexual revolution failed? The relationship between uh, the sexes and our epidemic of loneliness are two topics we find ourselves continually returning to the free press. And this is what they're saying. Over the last few weeks, we have brought you a range of essays on these themes from Jenny Powers and the surprising phone sex operators and so forth and so on, female pickup artists and so forth. Now, they are talking about men leaving the dating world. Are you religious? The question made Jamal squirm. And ladies, you can still send me the questions. Somebody's laughing in the chat. So you can still send me the questions. I will get to them, I promise you, because the lesson won't be long. The answer was no. He could tell his date wanted it to be yes. And after the hour-long drive to get here to a Caribbean restaurant in Orlando, Florida, he could tell it wasn't working. I think we should just be friends. The 36-year-old security guard remembers telling the girl he had dinner with last month after they met on Facebook. That was his first date in three years. He says he once went six months without getting a single match on a dating app, even though he pays $30, 30 a whopping $30 in monthly fees between OkCupid, okay are people still on that? Bumble and Hinge. If you count high school, when he went to the movies with a classmate, Jamal says he's been on a total of three dates his entire life. Yeah. And now, driving home from his date, it hit him like a ton of bricks. Why do I even do this at all? He walked into his apartment near Cape Canaveral, greeted the cats, and slumped down on his couch. Wait. Ladies, did they say greet the cats? Is that, didn't they call you all cat ladies? I, seriously, this is a real article. <laughs> this is a real article, y'all. I'm not making fun, I promise. <laughs> I promise, y'all. But didn't they say you all were cat ladies? Just, you know, hey. I'm so far out of the loop. He told me, now this is the, the reporter, he told me, realized at the time, compared to my peers who have gone out with women and know how to interact with them, I'm too far gone. I can't learn this stuff. He trails off and then adds, I'm just not going to try anymore. It's not worth it. Jamal, who asked me to conceal his last name to protect his reputation at work. And Jamal, y'all, is spelled J A. M M A L L. You can look up the article yourself. If I remember, let my ma send me an email to put the link in the chat because I didn't know I was going to read this. This is all impromptu, but I think this as context um, is one of a growing number of young men who are withdrawing from the dating pool. More than six in 10 men aged 18 to 29. Pay attention to this, you all, because these are the guys that you all are trying to date, I think are now single, up from about 5 in 10 in 2019, according to the data from Pew Research Center. Respondents give a range of reasons for their singlehood, including having more important priorities. Is that making money? Hopefully that's a more important priority. The fact that they, quote, just like being single, end quote. Wait a minute, is that not what they accuse the modern women of just wanting to be single? Don't they drag you off of filth because you all say you just like being single? Okay. Or they've gotten, quote unquote, too old, quote, to keep trying. But, oh, wait, don't they say that you all are going to in the danger zone? 
But part of it also boils down to this. It's hard for men to find partners at a moment when women are outpacing them at school and work. Wait, 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 wait. It boils down to this. It's hard for men to find partners at a moment when women are outpacing them at school and work. Wait a minute. That's not what we hear on social media, is it, ladies? We hear that they're outpacing women. Ladies, is it me or where is this article? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can post it in the chat. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to do you one better. That's what I'm going to do right now. So you could, so you can read it for yourselves. <laughs> I'm just calling out the hypocrisy of these dudes. That's all I'm saying. There it is, ladies. <laughs> Young women now hold 1.6 million more college degrees than men. Ladies, if you're in the app, I'm going to post the link in the app so you can always come back to this because you're going to need this as talking points when these dudes try to lie to you on these panels and on these YouTube videos and on social media. I want you to new use the numbers. Young women now hold 1.6 million more college degrees than men. Let me say it again. Young women now hold 1.6 million more college degrees than men. And in a growing number of cities, including Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., and New York, they make as much as or more than their male counterparts. Let me say it again for the people that came in late to the church house. Young women now hold 1.6 million more college degrees than men. And in a growing number of cities, including L.A., Washington, D.C., and New York, they make as much as or more than their male counterparts. That paragraph right there. And even if they become mothers, oh, and this is my favorite part. And even if they become mothers, you all, odds are four in 10 will become the breadwinners of their household. And it gives you links uh, to support those support that data. Quote, what discourages me so much is that most of the women that I've seen on dating sites, they want a man making as much as them and they're making upwards of like 100 grand, says Jamal, who tells me he makes $55,000 a year. Let me, let me, let me, let me do it. What discourages me so much is that most of the women that I've seen on dating sites, they want a man making as much as them. And they're making upwards like a hundred grand. <laughs> a lot of men are checking out. We're just tired. We're just tired of being told that we don't measure up either physically or financially. What? I found Jamal on the online Reddit community. True unpopular opinion where men and they put the link there so you can go check it out where men often vent about the dating scene. Wait a minute. So they've moved from <laughs> Instagram, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. Now they've gone to Reddit to complain about women on another subreddit, Purple Pill Debate. Oh, no, not another pill. Male com commenters de bemoan that they're held to the 666 rule, which mandates that they be six feet tall, make six figures, and have six inches or more downstairs. Jamal descri uh, describes himself as a straight-laced guy. Does that mean he's supposed to be a good guy? Have we heard this before? Who is five feet, five inches tall. Y'all, this is getting sad. I might not finish this. <laughs> oh my goodness the men i spoke with ranging from ages 17 to 33 and living in rural new jersey to austin texas said they felt overlooked in a competitive dating market where women often list salary requirements and height preferences on their profile you mean they actually had the audacity to list what kind of man they're attracted to mm. To see if things were as bad as they claimed, I joined two major dating platforms, Tinder and Hinge, and posed as a hip 30-year-old business owner with a full head of hair and degree from NYU. A few swipes in, I spotted a busty blonde 
leaning over in a halter dress with the caption, quote, together we could find out if you're lying about your height, quote. Then at, <clears throat> end quote, then at 22 year old, uh, then a 22 year old captured in a selfie at her work cubicle with her cleavage resting on her desk wrote, quote, don't super like me if you're ugly. I already have a lot going on, end quote. <laughs> let me let me do the voice don't even super like me if you're ugly i already have a lot going on peace out <laughs> another woman a five foot two inch bombshell named ashley warned me and quote if you are one of those split the check or you're not even wealthy next end quote that financial pressure is what screws men over most, said Jess Carbino, the former in-house sociologist for Tinder and Bumble. Quote, the traditional markers of adulthood, like buying a home, completing college, and getting married are all becoming far harder to achieve, Carbino said. Many men perceive themselves to be far less marriageable, and in turn, many women perceive them to be less marriageable too. She says it's even being easy to be Joe average on the dating market, but things are rougher now that the average man's salary, which hovers just above six sixty one thousand dollars in the U.S. You know, Clubhouse, they make less, by the way. <laughs> it's hardly enough to afford rent in most major uh, mace, most major american cities yet still many women hold out for men who make not just as much or more than they do but are also wildly attractive so wait a minute me women are being blamed because they want an attractive man who makes what they make or more interesting okay <sighs> While the sexual revolution freed women from depending on men for income or stabi in, uh, for stability, it also means they can privilege more frivolous qualities in a mate, says Rob Henderson, a psychology PhD with a substack on social mores. People used to care a bit more deeply about moral character and hard work and whether the person was an ethical and upstanding citizen. And now you don't have to worry about that quite as much. And you can sort of focus on things that are just like more immediate, like a traction the result men are at the tip top of the dating pool getting everything and the men who don't have it all get nothing isn't that what we heard the stupid manosphere say and even the alphas are feeling the squeeze one new york city based psychologist and i'm gonna leave it right there i want you all to finish the article because this could go on it gets entertaining but <laughs> I'm just letting you know, this is inside the male brain. They feel like you have the audacity to ask for much. And this goes to my point when I told you all that they need to humble you because if you have all these degrees and you're beautiful, well-traveled, speak several, langu sang uh, several languages, your waist is snatched, and you have the audacity to come to the connection, <clears throat> having to, saying that you're attracted to a certain thing a lot of guys have a problem with that and so when you come in these spaces with these men they need to make you they need to take you down a peg or two they need to remind you that you're have you heard in these spaces ladies you're being unrealistic you're delusional you've heard that before yet they're the ones dropping out of the dating pool so what I've seen women say is, I'd rather be lonely. <laughs> I'd rather be lonely or by myself than to marry a man I'm not attracted to. And how can you blame her for that? If she's already reconciled in her mind, she wants what she wants. Who are you to tell her she's wrong? That's my thoughts. So what do you think? Read the article. The link is in the chat. Let me post it one more time for you ladies. I didn't want to read it all because we'd be here till four o'clock. All right. <clears throat> what is an offer? What do I mean when I say a man's offer? Um, a man's offer is, and this is the meat and potatoes of the conversation, ladies. <clears throat> what is an offer? The offer is when a man is letting you know what he is giving you what he wants from you what he wants from the relationship what he wants out of it okay 
I'm sorry, y'all, my sinuses. What is an offer? That's it. It's simply that. What is he willing to give you? You. Not everybody else. You. Okay. When does he make an offer? It could be the first day. It could be. It's usually within the first few interactions. He's letting you know. All right. Now, the ultimate offer is a proposal. And that's what I think what women think is that. Um, a man is not making you an offer before a proposal. I want to train you ladies and instruct you ladies. This is going to help you navigate the, the dating market and the marriage market. Cause the dating market, I broke those markets, broke those markets down for you. Okay. But in the marriage market, he's going to make an offer to you soon. An offer is not just a proposal. That's the final, that's like him sealing the deal with you. He's already made the offer, which is to date you seriously and to eventually, he, he sees a future with you. He's already made that offer. So the proposal is the end of the offer, okay? So what does the offer look like? It could be the first time he sees you, you're a party girl, <clears throat> you're a lush, you have to stop the car so you can hurl because you drank too much that night and then you have sex with him on the first date. Um, he's already determined where that's going and his offer will look like nothing. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't offer you a date. He doesn't offer marriage. He doesn't offer a relationship. He's inconsistent. He's made the offer. The offer is in his behavior. Okay. His offer is in his behavior. So if he's not calling, if he's not texting, he's not consistent. He's not asking you out. He's made his offer, his offer, and, and he's coming around. He's coming around. When he comes around, he wants sex. He's made the offer. What's the offer, Miss Nicole? To ask the question is to answer it. <clears throat> the offer is sex. That's the offer. He's not, he's not pushing it any further. He's not, you know, uh, scheduling anything in the future. He is just keeping it really day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. He's inconsistent. He's not pursuing you. He's made an offer. Um, what's another offer? Oh, you're in a marriage market and he sees you and you all make a connection and you go out on a few dates. Just like my client, everything's good. Shout out to her. She knows who I'm talking about. And they're on the date and everything's great. He asked her out again. He asked her out again. By, I think my client, he asked her for a relationship. Uh, mm. I think he asked her for a relationship within the time frame that I tell you all. Within 30 days, he asked her to go exclusive, right? He's making an offer. When he says he wants to go exclusive, he's not having sex with anyone else. He only wants to see you. He doesn't want you seeing anybody else. He wants to evaluate the relationship and take it deeper to see if you all can officially start courting for marriage. He's making an offer. When he said... Will you be my girl? Who are you dating? Or I'm paraphrasing. Are you dating anybody else? I just want us to be exclusive. He's making an offer. He's letting you know that he's taking himself off the market, at least for now, to evaluate things between you and him to take it to the next level. All right. That's in the marriage market. People don't do that in the dating market. All right. Go back and watch that video about the markets. Um, that he's making an offer. So the proposal will come at the end of the offer because you all made it through that process. The proposal is not necessarily an offer. It's, it's, it's a proposal. <laughs> okay. He's proposing. How about us do this? You want to do this with me? That's a proposal. An offer is, this is what I'm, I'm laying it all out on the table. This is what it is. An offer could look like, um, you're out with a guy, you're having a good time. And you're seeing each other and he says, or you say, let's move in together. Doesn't matter who says it. Let's move in together. You say, you know, okay, I'll move in. Yeah, let's move in together. It just makes sense. Let's move in together, right? He's made his offer. He's made his offer. Well, Nicole, what do you mean? I want to get married. That was the offer. He's accepting your offer. If you asked him to move in, he's accepting your offer. That's where that's that's it. If you if he asks you to move in, that's that's the offer. That's it. You have to pay attention 
to the offer. And this is why I, I teach from the marriage market and not the dating market, because the dating market is so all over the place and people misunderstand a man's offer. So you could be dating a man a year, two, three years, and he's already made the offer in the first 30 days. The offer was what, Miss Nicole? Um, are you moving forward? <clears throat> Is he talking about a future with you? He's made the offer. Well, what's the offer? What are you doing now? Well, we just go out. We just hang out. We're having say, okay, that's the offer. That's the, all he's willing to give you right now. How will you know if he's made an offer? Because you'll be moving forward. You'll know. And here's the next thing. This is the one I want to go to. Lateral and stagnant versus moving forward. I talked about this on Clubhouse like maybe two years ago where a lot of women are only moving uh, laterally. They're not moving forward. A lateral move is moving in together. People think that that's moving forward, but it's really not. Because once you get in, you're actually become stagnant. That's why it's a lateral move. Moving forward is the process that I told you all about in the marriage market. We meet, we go out on a date, we date for a few weeks, then we graduate to courting, the courting phase, then we get married. That's forward movement. Anything outside of that is lateral and stagnant, period. Does that make sense, ladies? Anything outside of that, anything outside of that is lateral and stagnant, okay? So you're moving forward when you're meeting, dating, courting. And then marriage. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Anything outside of that, anything outside of that is lateral and stagnant. Now he will make you believe that you're moving forward because you moved in together, because you had a baby together, because he's talking about marriage with you, because he is <clears throat> taking you on trips, buying you things, lavishing you, great sex. All of these things make you think you're moving forward. The only thing about moving forward is you have the future. You can see the future. That's how you know you're moving forward. He's talking about the future. He's including you in the future. All right, that's how I can gauge whether he was going to get serious with me because he was talking about the future. Hey, I'm going to bring you out of Alabama and meet my parents. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that down the road. We're going to do that. And he does it. He puts a date down. See, what a lot of dudes will do now, they've gotten real clever, is they will talk about the future but never make steady plans for it. Or they'll say, yeah, I'm going to take you X, Y, Z down the road. Can you pick out some places you want to go? And then they never take you. That's what I'm talking about <laughs> is lateral and stagnant. Hold these men to what they promise you. If they promise you a trip, he better he better come through with that in, in the next six months. Or he better be buying the plane ticket. Something needs to be moving forward for me to believe what you say. I don't believe it until I see it. Until he's your husband, which if he makes it to be your husband, obviously he's doing these things right. But when you're in the dating phase, you don't take their word for nothing. Yeah, you know, hey, I want to take you to a baseball game. When? Oh, you know, sometime when baseball season starts. Well, what's a good time you want to do it? I, I, I don't want to go when it's too hot. Let's go in April. Well, it's only February. I don't want to plan too far out. Why not? <laughs> to get Braves tickets, you need to get those early. <clears throat> well, I was just, now, now you know he's just running his mouth. That's how you call them on the carpet for what they do. Can you change his offer? It depends. It depends. It, it depends. Right? That is if he is um <clears throat> if he's pursuing you he's actively pursuing you um you're talking about marriage more often than not no you can't change the offer and i'll just leave that there because if i go into the woods with that we will be here all day but more often than not you can't change the offer and this is why you see a lot of jim jones and chrissy relationships he made that offer way years years ago she didn't get the offer. She didn't understand he was making the offer. His offer was just him, a piece of him, not all of him. 
You see this all the time with, with celebrities. We see this play out all the time. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> and, and some women are okay with those offers. If you're okay with that, I'm not knocking that. But I am speaking to the women who specifically want more. They want to be married. You have to pay attention to that offer. And if he's, well, Miss Nicole, what if he asks me to move in and I want to get married? That's his offer. Can I change that offer? Yes, if you explicitly tell him, look, um, I want to be married. This is something I want. And I know that might not be you, but I want to be married. And just sit back and watch what he says and watch what he does. If he starts convulsing like he needs the exorcist, then you know he's not the one. Move on. And definitely close your legs down. Definitely. Men will say, yeah, I'm open to marriage. And then it will be forever and ever and ever. He will never move that conversation forward. If you find yourself asking where the relationship is going, are we going to get married? He's made his offer especially if you're already in bed with him. He's made his offer. He's cool with where things are right now. And this is why I tell you, ladies, if you want marriage, this is what you say in the beginning. I'm looking for a serious re a relationship that can lead to marriage. Let him bounce. Let him hop on off like Big Tigger if he wants to. So he is not the only man in the world. And believe me, Men will fold before women will. They think women will fold. Women only fold because we need money. That's when we start doing stupid crap. But if we didn't need money for men, we really wouldn't fold. They will fold because they need us more than we need them. And I'm not talking from a feminist standpoint. I'm talking from a place of power that you all need to understand. Stop giving it up because you're so into him and so attracted to him do you understand how many billions of people are on this planet and how many men you will be attracted to before you leave this place okay once a man knows that you will take his crap that you are so into him that he can make these empty promises to you it's over for you baby girl it's over right q a time let's get it let's get it oh let's see she said, Nicole, that's a big problem. They make 45 grand a year. Oh my God. God bless them. Hey, everybody needs a starting, a starting place. So I'm not knocking people. I just feel like for all the crap that men talk about women all day, you would think their money was right. Cause I guarantee you, if you look at these YouTubers, there's a website, I forgot the name of it. If you pull it, you can, you can figure out how much money they make. All these YouTubers talk a lot of this crap, all of these people on Facebook and TikTok and because they followed these social media people who passed away, they followed him to the ends of the earth, but they ignored his message about getting their money up. They ignored that crucial part of his message, which was to get your money up. You should be working. If I'm not mistaken, y'all, if you are all fans of him, if, if I'm wrong, correct me, but he did tell those guys to make, to work upward 60 hours a week. Am I, am I mistaken there? Cause he told them to work every single day. If I'm not mistaken, they always miss that message and they always want to go in on the women. So I'm saying cut the crap. Okay. Um, this guy in this article was a whole, Oh, socialbubble.com shows YouTuber salaries. Thank you. I told y'all I have the best mods on the app. You ever want to know what a YouTuber makes? Go to there, look it up. And it tells you how much they make, how much their channel is worth, how much they're pulling in per month on an average, if I'm not mistaken. Social Blade, Social Blade, I'm sorry, socialblade.com. So this is what I'm saying, ladies. <laughs> Don't let these guys psych you out into making horrible decisions before you're ready. Take your time, scope it out. This lady sent this question to me yesterday so i have to answer hers first let me find it okay there it is hi nicole i would like to ask a question for your live at 1 p.m tomorrow <laughs> is there any way to repair a relationship with a traditional man when i was the woman that showed poor qualities but i am trying to change as of now he's pretty turned off for me and i feel bad because I know the areas in myself that need to change. Hang on one second, guys. All 
All right. Let's let's talk about this. Um, she met a traditional man. The first question I would ask is, were you attracted to him? And were these poor qualities because you had other guys around? Were you just not feeling him? Like, what's going on when you say you show poor qualities? Was it poor qualities like you didn't um, return his phone calls? You were mean? You snapped? Like, what exactly were those poor qualities? And baby girl, if you're listening, go ahead and, and write me back. It's fine. But if he's turned off, if he's turned off, like, are you still communicating with him? Like, is he communicating back with you? Are you still seeing each other? It might be hope. But if he's turned off to where he's not talking to you, it's done. Eh, I wouldn't put any, any energy in it. I would just go get another man. Because like I've told you, ladies, taking exes back gives them men are super petty. Just so you know, men are more petty than women. And when you take back an ex, ladies on the other platform, hit the link at the top. So you can come over here and ask questions and talk and chat. I would love hit the link at the top. Join us. Oh, wait. Okay. Yes, yeah, there. Um, and don't take exes back, y'all. I told you not to take exes back, sweeties, because what they men are super petty. Men are pettier than women, just so you know. And they will admit that. They are more petty than we are. And when you take back an ex, all he's gonna do is drag you through the mud and make you cry, hurt, um, gaslight you every single thing to make you second guess yourself bring down your low self-esteem uh, he will do all of that because he's feeling petty instead of just saying i'm not feeling you anymore it's good some guys if they're completely over you they won't even come back to be petty now if a guy comes back to be petty or accepts you back because he and, and and he's petty with you that means he's it's still a little bit a little bit of care there just a little bit but I don't believe it's enough to build a relationship and fix the relationship because a man that loves you doesn't want to hurt you and put you through unnecessary pain. A guy that he feels like you hurt his feelings. He feels like you dissed him. You didn't treat him right. He is going to drag you for filth. Okay. <laughs> He's going to drag you as, as long as you sit there and take it. He's going to do it. And that's why I say never go back to exes. If he's an ex, leave him where he's where he is. He'll be okay. Go get you another man. And fix the poor qualities that you have, okay? Get on my app. Start working with me one-on-one. -on -one. Let's iron those things out. Whatever it is, it can be fixed, right? And as long as you're more good than bad, like we started off talking about with the good girl method, and if you want more of the good girl method, make sure you sign up for the wait list, which is at MrsNicoleMichelle.com. If you want to work on those things, so the next guy, that's your guy. You can hold him, right? Um, you feel bad because you know the areas in yourself that need to change, okay? So now that you know, it's no, long, uh, no longer necessary to beat yourself up. You, you have healthy introspection. You know what it is. Move on, get you another man. That's how you do that, all right? Now that you know what you have to fix, let's work together, okay? Um, I don't know if she wants me to read this online. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Let me know, um, XO, XO. You're my current client. I don't know if you want me to read this online, so I'll come back. Okay. All right, so let me go to YouTube because she sent that question to me yesterday. All right, thank you for sending the questions, ladies. All right. She asks, wait, hold on. I thought it was YouTube. I'm for sure that was YouTube. Okay, maybe not. Oh, here it is. <laughs> How do you know the balance between if you are goofy and silly versus childish or immature to a man? Um, <clears throat> This is an easy one. Goofy and silly is goofy and silly. You kind of girlish, um, not to be taken seriously. You find fun in the moment. 
childish and immature is you take situations out of context and make them inappropriate. All right. So if let's say, for instance, you're you are on his own. OK, that's a personal question. OK, I got you, baby. I will respond to you when I get done. Um, so. When you are in situations, you have to gauge the appropriateness of your response. And that comes with maturity. And so when, you know, a man wants a woman that can gauge these and, and te uh, uh, take the temperature of the moment, social awareness, emotional awareness, right? That's what comes with maturity. And you're able to add insight and a perspective to conversations and in two situations and moments and spaces where goofy and kind of childish and eh, it's okay to be girly sometimes and kind of girlish and he 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 and all that but you have to bring that in sometimes and check the appropriateness and the temperature of the moment right that's the kind of woman that men want right and you can balance the two like sometimes you could be just flat out goofy it is it comes a time me and actually like that sometimes when you can kind of lighten the mood and you can find the joke and things immature is where you take it too far it's inappropriate and you have nothing else of value to add to the space or the conversation or the you know that's when it becomes immature and he's like i can't deal she's too childish does that make sense Hopefully that helped. All right, let me go to YouTube and then I'm going to go to my email because there were some questions over there. I didn't see Ty Tyrese's post. Somebody sent it to me on IG. I don't know what he was talking about. Uh, let's see. Um, eat everything in moderation. <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> Speaking of projects, when are you thinking the new wives course will be ready in within the next 30 days? Within absolutely. The alluring wives course will come out. I think you will enjoy it. I'm trying to put my foot in it so I don't have to redo it every few years, but I always update my stuff every two or three years anyway. But this course will be for wives and um women aspiring to be wives. So also, I do have the bearish prep course that's still available always. Can anyone catch me up on the good girl course, how to obtain it and purchase it? Yes, Mrs. Nicole Michelle.com. Go sign up for the wait list so that you will get the emails when it is launched. I told you all, I don't do that. Oh, it's only available for that was just the launch because I launched it on a whim. I didn't know that I was going to make this a course. And so the ladies that got into the first batch I made it really, really affordable because I didn't know what I was, how to structure the course. And now that I know how to structure it, I'm going to actually make it a course. And I got good reviews on it, by the way, from the ladies who've taken it. Um, I'm going to structure it into a course. And I'm not the type of uh, mentor to just put stuff out once a year. I know you ladies need that stuff. You might, you know, hey, I have some extra money or I, I have some free time. I want to sit down and take a course. I don't want you to have to, oh, I have to wait to the end of the year. I have to wait to the summer. She, I have to wait on this wait list. I hate that personally. <laughs> um, that's why I started working with my particular business coach. He didn't make me wait. I, I hate that. If I need something, I don't need to wait. Give it to me. <laughs> hey, if you had the money, click on it and buy it. That's how I feel. I don't. Dude, I hate that. And I don't have time for stupid launches. Like once it's on the market, it's on the market. Um, Let's see here. So don't worry about it. You won't miss anything. Once it's on the market, you can go to my website and buy it whenever you feel like it. Um, Let's see here. Okay, I think I have everything on YouTube. I'm scrolling. Uh, they don't want to hear that, Miss Nicole. <laughs> they don't have a choice. The articles are saying that they are cat cat dudes. They're cat dad. They're not even cat daddies. They're cat dudes, bros, whatever. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find all the questions on YouTube, and then I'm going to go to Clubhouse and see if they have any questions. I thought I saw a question on YouTube. I thought I did. Oh, there it is. Okay, question. Rhythm and wander. Hey, girl. I don't want to be a girlfriend. 
How can one use feminine persuasion to convince a man to continue dating non-exclusively until he knows he wants to marry me? I'm 32. I can't be put on layaway. Good. Good mindset. Let him know from the beginning, ladies. You cannot get this part wrong. I'm looking for a serious relationship that can lead to marriage. You cannot get that sentence wrong. You can paraphrase it all you want to, but it has to mean that. And you need to say that soon. When he asks you what you're looking for, what do you want? Don't let him put words in your mouth. Don't guess. Say it exactly like I said or paraphrase it in your own words. But you need to let him know that you are looking for marriage. Ah, you, you sound desperate. Yeah, but I'm married. So I let Tony know I want marriage. I don't care if I'm 65. You don't get to date me forever. That's not how we do this. <laughs> Shout out to Cat Williams. That's not how this works. That's not how this works. We don't do it. We, we, no, no. I don't care if I'm 97. You don't date me forever. I think highly of myself enough to know that I'm coming off this market, whether it's you or somebody else. Okay. So that's the, go in there with that kind of confidence. Don't say it like that, but go in there with that kind of confidence. Well, what you looking for, baby girl? I'm looking for a serious relationship that can lead to marriage. And your behavior needs to back that up. Don't come in here quoting sexy red songs. You, it's got your lifestyle needs to mimic a wife. It, it needs to be like a wife. You need to talk like a wife, move like a wife, dress like a wife, move like a wife, period. You can't say that and then want to turn up city girl style this summer. Like, well, I'm, I'm single, Miss Nicole. I got to live my life. Okay, which do you want more, single life or married life? And men look at every single thing you do. They look at the fact she says she wants to be a wife, but she dresses like she's going to the club. Every time I see her, she's talking like a sailor. Every time I see her, she's picking fights. Every time I see her, she doesn't want kids. I talk to her about kids. She doesn't want kids. Like, you know, everything about her is non-wife. And here's another thing. And I'm going to put this in the good girl method and I'm writing this down so I don't forget. Women who talk against wives are not wife material. If, if you ever heard a woman constantly going in on married women, I guarantee you she's single and I guarantee you men do not find her as wife material. You know why? Because wives, we're like, like, we're like a club and the women who want to get married are kind of in the club too, even though they're not married. We're kind of like this little sorority, if you will. And women who speak against marriage are kind of like, um, men look at that like, okay, so if you're talking against women who are married, then that means you don't want to be married because you think so lowly of wives and they think, well, I'm talking bad about th those wives. That means I'm going to be better. Well, no. If you were going to be better, you would actually live better. You would actually be better. You wouldn't be talking down on women who are actually in marriages. That's like, let me put it in better context. Have you ever heard men who are constantly downing married men? How would that make you feel to be in the presence of a man who's constantly going down, going in on married men? Do you feel safe with him? Do you feel like, oh, he's going to make a good husband? Uh, no, you're like, ew, uh. It's something in you that goes, eh, he's not safe, right? That's what happens when a man hears a woman going off on married women all the time. You always have something greasy to say about married women. Like all of the women that went in, went off on Danae Jackson with, you know, Derek Earl Jackson cheated on her. And, I, cause, and they went in on the married woman. First of all, what did she do wrong? <laughs> Shout out to all the good girls united. What did she do wrong? She married them. Uh, um, other than marry him, outside of marrying him, what did she do wrong? I mean, she's at home. She's helping him build, which is what y'all wanted. Um, she's being faithful, which is what y'all wanted. He runs the streets on her, which is what y'all wanted. <laughs> she has his kids. She doesn't do anything. She's never on social media speaking about herself. Like she did everything. What did you want her to do? What did she do wrong? And the men are like, oh, she got on camp. How would you act if your man embarrassed you in front of the world? You don't even know how you would act. 
but everybody is so judgmental of married women until you are married and walk in their shoes you can't judge another woman by how she handles adversity you can't do it every woman that talks against married women i automatically know they are not matt wife material and i'm a professional and i've been doing this for over 10 years i guarantee you they're single married women it's like a code i don't know what it is with married women and women who want to be married women who want to be married you're in this club too because you're like wait wait i huh <laughs> so that's another little thing i'm gonna put that in a good girl method too because i'm gonna go in the woods with that one that's another clear sign to professionals like me and men they know automatically you talking greasy about you don't respect the position you don't respect women who are okay so what if i bring you around my colleagues are you gonna make enemies of my colleagues wives like i can't even trust you like who are you <laughs> uh, ladies gotta watch what you say you gotta watch what you say no don't watch what you say because that's who you are um but ladies i'm just saying maybe you didn't realize that that is a bad thing don't do that and i'm not just saying that because i'm married even when i wasn't married i didn't talk bad about wives because i know how hard marriage is i know how these men do i know how these men behave and i'm never gonna judge a wife by how unless she destroyed everything in the house and burnt it down and with him in it or something something drastic like that i'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt which is what you would want people to do when you're a wife but if you're not a wife never been a wife don't think like a wife and don't want to be a wife your first inclination is well she should have did the right thing that's why he cheated on her excuse me so what a, what a man hears is when i get with you i can cheat too that's what he hears and every woman that goes off on a wife i want to know what you do when your man cheats on you i want you to fire up I want you to go live on IG, YouTube, or wherever. And I want you to tell us, enlighten us, how you will handle that situation. Because obviously we're all ignorant. Um, <laughs> but um, he wants to, you want to know if he wants to marry you. Is the relationship moving forward? And I don't know if you're the same young lady that said you wanted to be a nomad at one time. You wanted to travel the world or something like that i i'm not sure if that's you but if it is you or let me just make this point anyway even if it's not you um ladies if you want to be a wife you got to be stationary well you know my job is moving me to london for two years but hey why won't you marry me um again ladies logically that doesn't make sense because you're moving <laughs> your job is first if you talk about your job all the time guess what he thinks you prioritize your job kind of simple huh i told you men are not that difficult right um hopefully that answers your question you're free to follow up with me if it did not hey Brittany. hi nicole do you think dating for ladies using the good girl method will become easier in the next few years men are saying they're over the dating market yeah they're saying it but um the the good girl method is teaching you how to be honest in a different way without compromising who you are and what you are and i never lied to tony about anything never straight straight up straight up and down um i told him what i wanted Yes, I need security. I'm getting older. <laughs> I have a business. It's, it's great. But um, security is cool. Um, I need certain things. I want companionship. I don't want to get sick and nobody's by my bedside. I'm doing this life alone, taking single girls cruises in my 50s. That's not what Nicole wanted. I'm, I'm not down anybody else that's cool with that. But Nicole needed somebody. If if I were to get sick, I want somebody holding my hand. I want somebody loving on me and telling me I'm beautiful as I go into the next stages of my life. I don't want to be by myself. I want a family. And I don't, you know, and I told them, yes, and we need money for that. So, yeah, I need your money. I need your money. I want your money. I need your money. Um... <laughs> 
<laughs> I need your body. I need your time. I need your input. I need your masculinity. I need your, your wisdom. I need all of that. I need everything you have to offer. Every last drop, everything. I don't, I don't, I, you know, if you're only going to give me a little bit, then we're not, I'm not the one, obviously, but I need everything, money included, all of it. I didn't lie. I was very straightforward. That's what I want. And I want marriage. That's what it is. And I'm okay if, if I'm not your girl and he kept pursuing me. So I was like, Hey, uh, we got a winner. Okay. So he obviously is in agreement with that. Ladies, don't be afraid to state what it is you want because that's the only way he can give it to you is if he knows what it is you want. Straight up. Now you figure out in your own words, Brittany, how to how to um um communicate what it is you want. And don't be afraid. I know the article I read that is for men. A lot of them didn't have fathers. They didn't have masculine mentorship, masculine grooming. So a lot of them, and this is the part men will never admit, but a lot of them that did not have a strong masculine feminine balance in the home every single day, they are vastly, they are, oh, they are so afraid of marriage. They fear failing because they didn't see a model of it growing up. This is why you see men who are raised in two parent homes have no issue getting married. None. They're like, eh, I might not get married right now, but I know eventually I'm getting married. It's never a question in their mind uh, it, whether they are getting married or not. Men who did not have the masculine and the feminine married in the household, a functioning, healthy marriage are going to uh, drag their feet a little bit, be scared, be fear. And it's good for women to understand that to not necessarily eliminate him just because he's afraid. If he can, if he's willing to hold your hand and walk through that fear with you, uh, because fear is not of God. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. If he's willing to put his hand in yours and uh, you, you all are powerful together. He has good sense. There is no fear. There is no fear in love. Okay. So if he's willing to uh, address his fears and go into the relationship and try, give him a shot, right? Don't try to force it with men who don't want it. Don't, don't do that. All right, ladies on Clubhouse, let's finish up over here because I don't see any questions over here. So let's finish up on YouTube. Hit the link at the top so we can get through these questions because I know there will be a question that you all won't answer. And, um, just hit that link at the top and join me. So, um, with that, don't be afraid. The fellas that want to be married eventually are going to get sick of that red pill crap, that manosphere crap. And anyway, those men are not marriageable anyway, but the men who want marriage and want a family eventually are going to get somewhere and learn how to get along with a woman long enough to get married. And that means that we're going to have to do self inventory on ourselves. Ladies, do we, you know, are we ready for marriage? Is that something we really want? Do we want a family? Are we willing to make the necessary changes and adjustments in our life to be married? Are we ready for that? Right. All right. That's, that's what the good girl method is all about. Um, all of these things that I tell these pointers that I'm giving you about the good and the bad. That's just one of them. And I'm telling you those things because it's unconventional wisdom. It's not wisdom that you just, you hear every time, hear all the time. It's, it's stuff that mothers told their daughters, you know what I mean? In private mother, daughter chats, right? It's stuff that my mother taught me what to do. It, it's, it's stuff that I saw my mother doing that endeared her to my dad. I was like, oh, and, I, and I'm just thinking about those things. I'm like, oh, this stuff needs to be out there. Right. And that's why I said it was dangerous because in the wrong hands, man, you have men flipping over you. Right. Beauty for ashes. Do you think you get a second opportunity to show a man your value? Yes. If you've made a big mistake, it does not mean that he's going to come back to you, but you still do get an opportunity to show him your value. If he left you, show your value by not calling him, stalking him, um, you know, making public announcements and showing out in public and things like that. You handle it like an elegant lady. We split up. That's what it is. What happened? You know, that's, that's our private, intimate 
you know, relationship. That's what happened. This is where we are. And that's that. We, we just decline to go into further detail or just being real elegant about it. Okay. If that's your choice, for instance, if a guy breaks up with you, for instance, and I'm gonna tell this story in, <laughs> there was a guy who made a decision. You remember the guy that I was crying over? Ah, why you don't love me? That guy. Um, eventually I did not leave that relationship elegantly. Like I just was, I just was head over my heels and I really had scarcity mindset at that time. I was like, he is everything that I need on paper. Like all the other stuff I can deal with. I'm good. Like, yeah. And I'm still, you know, in my mind, I'm like, he's worth fighting for. And he was not. Eventually I got elegant about it. And I was like, you know what? He made the decision. It must be right. Okay, because I believe I'm the best woman for any man that I'm with. I'm, I am the best woman for you. If you get with me, I'm going to give you 100%. Not just because you, you deserve to be. No, it's about I know what I bring to the table. I know what kind of woman I am. I know how I show up. I am so confident in my skills as a woman and, and how much I give to a man emotionally on all cylinders. I know I hit all cylinders. So for him to walk away from me, something happened. There was a breakdown and it could have been me. <laughs> it probably was me. I wasn't. And you know what, y'all? I wasn't at the top of my game. I wasn't. I wasn't. At the, when I look back at that relationship, I was not at the top of my game and I made huge errors. It wasn't deal making, deal breaking errors in my opinion, but um, I made errors. He considered errors and he's right. I wasn't the woman for him. But when I was with Tony, I was on point. I was like, I know what I want. I know what I, I showed up as my best self. I fell in love because I was open and honest and I want this man. I'm not going to play games. Like I was completely vulnerable. Like, yes, this is what I want. Right. And I was not with him. And then when it fell apart, I was like, uh, and I didn't leave that relationship elegantly. I'm being transparent with you all. Just so you know, I've made four pause too. Okay. I didn't leave that connection elegantly, but I had, I got a chance to show my value because I said, you know what? Let me cry. Let me take a couple of days to just cry, eat my little rum raisin ice cream, watch Lifetime cry sniffle get mad go through my stages of grief and then I'm going to get up and I'm going to be the Nicole that I know I am because he's not the only man in the world and literally less than a few months later and I mean I started talking to God I was like God I'm sorry because I ignored you this whole relationship I didn't pray I didn't talk to you I didn't consult you I didn't read my scriptures I didn't do anything it was just all about him 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 my man my man my man my man well my man ended up not being my man <laughs> and then you know once I completely completely detox of men relationships all and meanwhile I'm coaching other people about relationships while I'm going through this and I'm and, and I'm learning from them learning from my clients like oh i made a mistake there and, I, and as i'm talking to them i'm realizing i made a mistake there 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 and i said you know what let me talk to a professional that can help me because i'm a professional but i need a professional help right i don't i don't want to be a doctor that operates on so let me go. So I hired a professional. They said, Nicole, these are your areas of opportunity. I said, what? I never thought those were the areas of opportunity. I fixed those things. I met Tony. Boom. We got married. And the point I'm trying to make is I showed my value by moving on, by saying, you know what? You're right. This connection is the right. Not to say that he dumped you, but sometimes when the connection doesn't last, when the relationship doesn't last, sometimes it's not the, the worst thing in the world. And that's the opportunity for you to really blossom, for you to level up, elevate all those things, change your hair color, lose that weight, learn that language, all of the things, especially if you feel like you made a mistake in that specific area, take that area and knock it out. So the areas that there was no area he said I did wrong in, but the areas that my coach specifically pointed out, I 
honed in on it and I boom, knocked it out. That's why I tell you ladies to get a mentor or a coach before you meet the guy so that when you meet him, you hit the ground running. There is no way I could have sealed the deal with my husband with these issues. There's no way. It, it took a third party to point it out to me because I thought I was cool. I, and I was, but those two things needed to be fixed and fixed quick, right? So what I'm saying is, yes, you absolutely have a chance to show your value. Now, in, and I talked about this on my app, so you definitely need to go listen to that, which exes you should take back because there are exes that it's, it's okay to take those back. But there are a couple of types of exes you should never, ever, ever, ever take back. And that's on the app. So hopefully that answers your question. But your second opportunity to show your value to a man may not result in you all getting back together, but it's sure going to make you feel good. And going into your next relationship is sure going to knock it out. You're going to be so confident. And instead of focusing on you and him, you're going to be focusing on you. And before you know it, the new guy shows up. It, I mean, in a literal, literally weeks, sometimes days, the new guy shows up while you're working on yourself. Right. So um, that's what I think about that. Let's see here. Um. Um, uh, somebody says not to look at sex as a chore. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. We're definitely going to talk about that in the alluring wife. Miss Insane Membrane. Miss Insane in a Membrane. That is a name for you, okay? <laughs> Question. I have an older gentleman promising marriage and full providing, okay? Can I suggest certain type of dates or is that seen as too pushy? Um... No, it's not. I mean, he should ask you every now and then what you want to do. So, um, you know, you can say, may I make a suggestion? I wouldn't do that too often. Do you not like the dates or it's just something specific you want to do? Other than that, just kind of roll with it. But he should actually ask you what you want. Or just flat out ask him, hey, can we go rock gliding? Make sure it's something he can do. You said he's older. Um... <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we go do a round of golf or something? Or, you know, I was always curious about going to this museum. Can we go one day? Will you take me one day? You know, you can, you know, kind of femininely suggest it. Um, If you can get the email at this point, sure. Let's see. Today is the only day I'm taking questions for emails. That is for clients. Um. Hopefully that answered your question. So he should be asking what you want to do. And if he doesn't, I wouldn't suggest it. I would just ask. And that's another thing. I'm glad you brought that up. Suggestions, leave that for work. When you're a feminine woman and you're with a man who's traditional and he's doing all those things that we love, go ahead and just ask him flat out. There was... um. I did this with my dad so often. I asked him all the time, dad, can I have this? Dad, can I have that? So it transferred into my relationships. So it's just second nature with me. When Tony and I were courting, I was not a girlfriend. I was not dating. I'm not like, well, courting girlfriend, I guess. But we were courting. We were like serious. And he was not paying my bills or anything like that because I don't do that. But um, I said, <clears throat> I saw something. <clears throat> that I wanted, excuse me. I saw a coat that I wanted. And it was jazzy too. Oh, I love this coat, baby. Full length coat. I loved it. And so I said, Tony, will you buy this coat for me? I saw this coat online. Will you buy it for me? I just simply, I just asked. He can say no or he can say yes. He said, send me the website. And that was that. So, ladies, save suggestions for the boardroom, for work. When it comes to your man, just flat out ask. Just ask him. Don't beat around the bush. You don't have to do any um, spells, uh, tricks, lies. Just ask the man. Baby, will you buy these shoes for me? Everybody, practice that. Say that out loud. Baby, will you buy these shoes for me? 
Baby, will you take me to this restaurant? Baby, I've always wanted to go to that spa. Will you take me? Just ask. Stop playing games with me. In the year 2024, you all have got to be honest with these men. Just be honest. If he can't have a handle honesty, then he's not right for anybody. If a man wants you to lie, that's a character flaw in him. Okay? And I know plenty of men who want women to lie to them. As long as she's beautiful, he wants her to lie. And so everybody's living this lie. But the average guy out here, this is every, every average guy, like most average guys just want you to be honest. You can be a good girl with a few flaws. As long as you're honest, like this is a flaw for me. This is an issue for me. I have a, ch I'm, I'm challenged in this area. Most of the time, guys will let that stuff slide. <laughs> a lot of times, if it's not a deal breaker. Just be honest. Just ask, ladies. Practice just asking. Just ask. You don't need to cast a spell. Okay? You don't need to practice witchcraft to get something from a man. <laughs> I laugh when y'all talk. I, I promise you that stuff is hilarious. They have to be gaslighting, y'all. Cast a spell to get a man to... What? Girl, just ask him for the shoes. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's hilarious. No shade. But y'all don't have to do that. Men are so simple. They just want you to ask. And if he gets offended by you asking a question, obviously he's not the guy for you. If you're, I mean, really, you're testing his tenderness, his generosity, his sensitivity. It's so many things. You're just like he asked you for something. Baby, can you make my lunch for work? Like if I come over and spend some time with you, will you make my lunch for tomorrow? Or can you pack up what's left over, that, the dinner that you made for me? Can you pack that up and f into a lunch? You see how he just asked that question? Men have no problems asking women for stuff. But for some reason, we have a heart. Uh, uh, let me cast a spell. Uh, uh, why especially if you're christian you shouldn't be doing that anyway uh, let me have all these crystals let me let me let me go to the soothsayer let me what's in the cards what's in uh, my astrology girl just ask him can i have the shoes please it's this website um. <laughs> barney's new york let me can i get that dress i really love this dress baby i'm gonna look so good on your arm in this dress he's gonna be like oh let me see it it's red too baby oh let me see it and the next thing you know you have the dress mrs nicole hey ae how you doing what do you think about a man that tells you quote get his wife and quote if we date it towards marriage however we haven't gone on a date or done anything romantic he's full of crap he's full of crap and he's the guy that i was talking about before where he's making an offer it seems like he's making an offer it seems like he's moving forward this guy isn't moving forward he's just talking so nothing you do was is going to get this guy moving forward typically what has happened with this guy is this has been enough to get pennies and so guys will show you how much effort it took to get pennies because that's what he'll try with you okay so if the last girl gave him pennies because he talked a good game made promises and so forth and so on he's going to continue doing that until it no longer works so when he says um you know if we date towards marriage then you can say date towards marriage it's interesting how do you pose to do that if you never date just ask them. No, I'm not asking about me per se. Take it off of you. Just, I'm not asking. I'm just curious. How do you plan to get married if you don't date? Do you plan to date the women that you marry? He's going to go, that's a foolish question, woman. Of course I plan to date the women that I marry. Really? Now you have the answer to your question. Because if, because if he's not asking you out, then to ask the question is to answer it. Um, and I don't know how long you've been knowing him, but if he's talking about get his wife, if we date towards marriage, I told you ladies, a lot of these guys are going to start using marriage, wife, kids, traditional, all of the little buzzwords that we use on this channel. They're going to start adapting like little chameleons to get you to drop those pennies. They have got, you got to have some ROI. He has some dates. Is he calling you regularly? Is he coming by? Is he 
um, you know, doing things for, like, what is he doing th that he's just saying, get his wife. Why, why are you saying that with a strange woman? And he's not asking you out. You haven't done anything romantic. Like how often is he calling you? Is he persistent? Is he pursuing you? All of these things play into that. And if he's not, and he doesn't move forward, he never moves forward. He's full of crap. And he's just hoping that that's just enough. It's sort of like, I had a guy take me to the mountains one time, the mountains in Georgia, and he gave me his coat. And this was like when I first moved to Georgia. <laughs> and I was so smitten with him, y'all. And, you know, he's a professional. And he worked in TV. And I was just head over heels. And he knew it. He put, on, put me on his coat, wrapped me up in his coat. So, of course, I'm on cloud nine. We're looking over the, you know, the mountains, you know. Not Stone Mountain, the mountains. Like it wasn't, it was, it was a uh, Helen, Helena, Georgia, somewhere, somewhere up in there where you go all the way up the top. And I'm ladies, it was so beautiful. Like everybody falls in love when they go up there. And he said, put your hand in the pocket of my coat. So ladies, you know what I was thinking, right? I'm like, oh my God, I propose. Girl, I put my hand in that coat and it wasn't nothing there. He was like, can you imagine pulling out an engagement ring? And <laughs> I said, can I imagine? <laughs> Do you understand I've been married before? <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I was like, let me, let me contain myself because I'm on the top of this mountain and I do not want to get left. So let me just, I just looked and I was like, you know, I've been married before, right? He was like, yeah, I know you've been married before, but can you imagine? He tried to go back to, can you imagine? I was like, I can imagine it. And at that time, I kind of came out of my trance about him. I literally came out of my trance. I was like, did he just try to flim flam me? Did he really think this was going to work on me? <laughs> Are you seriously? It's like I came out of my trance about him. It's like I saw him differently after that. I was like, did he think that was going to? No, he didn't think that was going to work on me. But for some reason, guys will try it. They will try it. And I let him know then that that doesn't work. Nice try. No, that wasn't even a nice try. But <laughs> that's just no. Um, and guys will try the least to get the most, just so you know. And he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Awesome guy. But. I knew then, like, I knew he was making an offer, but it wasn't the offer that I wanted. That was that. And he needed to buy more time with me, which, you know, um, it means when a man is trying to buy time with you or he's trying to prolong things or he's trying to keep from moving forward, he's letting you know that he doesn't plan to move forward, just so you know. Beauty for Ashes, she said it was someone I liked and lacked confidence at the time, so it lowered my value, I believe. No problem. So work on that. Work on elevating. Work on everything that's going to help build your confidence. And when he sees you again, you won't be clingy. When he goes, hey, girl, Merry Christmas or happy birthday, you won't jump through the phone or whatever because you're so excited. You're like, who is this? <laughs> and throw, hey, buddy, how are you? By the way, guys hate to be called buddy, but I'll go into that in another stream. Star D, hey, Star D, how often do you recommend married couples go out on a date with children at least once a month? Without children personally, and this is just Tony and I, we go out once a month. I'm sorry, once a week. We go out once a week. Um, but we don't have children, like our children are grown. So, but married couples with children at least once a month, but you need to spend a few hours together per week without the children. So it does not have to necessarily be a date, but it needs to be solitary time with you all and not just sleeping, right? It's gotta be some quality time where you all are up, you're talking, you're in each other's space or whatever. 
this is why I tell women it's good for y'all. You all not to work so <laughs> that you are available for him when he's available, when he's off work and things like that. You're available for him when you're working. You know, you get home, you have cook, clean, all that kind of stuff. I don't need to have to, I don't have to tell you everything that you have to do. And then you want some, some me time, right? To kind of decompress from your day so that you can build up for the next day, right? And then he wants some quality time. How do you fit that in? It's difficult. So with married couples who work, you need to make a concerted effort to spend time together a few hours per week, more than 10 hours per week. Um, those of you who don't have children, you can, you can squeeze a date night in there. You can squeeze a date night in there. And for those of you who do have children, at least one date out of the house per month together. Right. All right. Let's go to the email and then I'll come back to YouTube. Uh, let's go to the email. They're saying they're emailing me. So let's, let's look. Okay. Quite a few emails over here. All right. <clears throat> to Mrs. Nicole Michelle. Hey baby. Here is a text exchanged between me. I'm in the blue and a man who's in the white from a dating app. I've been running into these type of men often and I like uh, to have an experienced wife assist me with breaking down and analyzing this exchange. I'm 26 years old, the man is 34. Okay, so he says, I'm looking for a black woman that's nice, ambitious and capable of unconditional love. Is that you? And she goes, yes, can you clarify if you desire to have an ambitious woman links to her career or personal goals she works towards daily? Good, good catch. Good, good, good. Because as I was reading that, I said ambitious. Good catch, she caught it. So he says it's both. I'm into women who want more of life, more out of life, I guess that's what he means. In America, that translates to both career and personal goals a real balance. I've seen uh so many black I've seen so many black women go out sad after a series of unfortunate events that happen after they uh relied solely on a man. I'm not into that and have a passion for empowering black women. Okay, this man is a 50/50 man. Okay? So she says, I, I don't need to even read anymore. <laughs> I don't even need to read your reply, girl. He's 50-50. Anytime he says, oh, yes, I'm all about black women, empowering black women, he wants you to continue working. He sees you as a workhorse. And not just you. That's him in general. He's not a, he's not a traditional man. Okay? A traditional man would never say that. A traditional man, that's the last thing he wants is an ambitious woman. That's one thing you will never hear a traditional man say. I want an ambitious woman. Ever. Ever. I think I told Tony what my degree is one time. And I think I brought it up. He never asked me. Didn't care. It was on him to pay the bills. Ever. Does that make sense, baby? Write me back if that answers your question. Okay. Next question. Hi, Mrs. Nicole. I'm so happy to have found you on YouTube last month. Welcome, baby. I have been binging your lives and I have been learning, laughing, growing, and doing some introspection, but I now have a few questions. Okay. Do you think a young woman should spend some time living on her own first? Yes. Yes, she should. Yes. Um, I'm 26 years old and I still live with my parents. I am one of four children. I desire to get married, but I also desire to have some time with myself in my own space before I get married. Most of my life, I've been sharing myself and things with my family and siblings. I would also like to sharpen my wife's skills during this time, cooking, decorating, organizing. I will be finishing grad school this year, and I think I'll be able to afford it. I wouldn't want to feel resentful for going from sharing a space with my family to sharing a space with my husband. This is a very mature question, and here's the thing. I would have to ask you, do you plan on working after you get married, or do you plan on being a one-income household? And this is important. And the reason why I'm asking that is because traditional women, um, I still think that they should get out and live on their own first. 
but traditional women don't have to do that necessarily but you kind of do need to get out and experience the world on your own first even if it's just for a few months and i say that because and with all sincerity i do want you to be safe and that i don't want you to get into the comfortable of paying bills being on your own you're in school and when you finish school you're obviously going to start working and all of that good stuff so the question becomes do you want to continue working after you get married because if you do you definitely need to go and practice paying bills on your own practice you know money management homemaking all of those things on your own organizing all of those things on your own do your Mary Tyler Moore ladies look up Mary Tyler Moore I think it's on Hulu just watch the first episode ladies that's a classic everyone this is mandatory watch the first episode of Mary Tyler Moore I think it's available on Hulu and that will kind of give you an idea of what you want to do right if you want to be a traditional if you want to be a traditional um, housewife it's not mandatory that you live on your own but it's still a good idea right so that you understand how the world works so that you don't get in a marriage and start resenting your husband feeling like he's keeping you from something or that you're kept away from something because you're married that's the last thing you want to do you don't want to start feeling like the world the, the walls are closing in on you because you're married because i guarantee you when you uh when you do that <laughs> and you're married and those babies in a house, no matter how wonderful it is, is going to feel like prison because you feel like part of you wasn't developed. So I know this is unconventional. I know there will be some trad wives who are so Bible this and Bible that and, oh, my God, you leave daddy's house and go straight to marriage. I believe that every woman should live on her own for a year or two before marriage. So you get even if it's to gain an appreciation for your man paying the bills. Oh, Lord, <laughs> get appreciation. Find out who you are as a woman because some of you uh, may be doing what mommy and daddy want and you will find out maybe that's not what I want. And it's not from a rebellious place, but just as a you developing and completely developing your womanhood. Um, I, I told my husband the other day that I was trying to locate photos of my mother because I saw photos of my mother when she was young my mom was doing it up. She was on a bus full of folks and they were going on, on an archeolog uh, archeological dig somewhere in Arizona. I just couldn't believe it. My mom was on an archeological dig. <laughs> I was looking at the photos like my mama, my mama used to play tennis. Like my mom was, I, I was like, mama? mama, well, I knew she was a poet, but my mom was the quintessential babe i was like oh i'm not living life to the fullest i haven't at least i haven't done an archaeological dig and my mom did an archaeological dig what am i doing i'm not living life and i said that to say when my mom got married she stayed married to my dad to death do his part to death do them part my my father passed away first and then she passed away um years later but she lived life and she was a complete woman going into marriage does that make sense so I know the super, super duper Christian trad wives are going to, I'm Christian. I believe in the Lord. I'm a believer too. But I also believe that women need a complete, I'm not telling you to go out there and sleep with guys and be all party girl. But I am saying go out there and appreciate life, live life, find out who you are, find out your decorating style, find out how you like to clean, how you like to live, but not a whole long time, not like for 10 20 years you definitely want to get married soon so that you don't get so set in your ways to where you kind of like living by yourself <laughs> i think that's what's happening to a lot of women so that's what i'm saying is go out live life enjoy life there's nothing wrong with that for a year or two and while you're a single girl what is that that tv show uh that girl i think it came out in the late 60s it was on the the tail end was the, the very beginning of the feminist movement, the sexual revolution movement, the late seventies, that girl, go watch that TV show. And you will kind of get an idea of what America was looking like 
in the 60s and how women were starting to view working and being married. That girl, that whole series, that man chased her the whole series <laughs> trying to marry her, but she wanted a career. Same thing with Mary, uh, Mary Tyler Moore. Um, that was Hollywood trying to indoctrinate us women to go to work, just so y'all know. But I'll talk about that later. I've talked about it before, but um, ladies, if you have Hulu, just go watch Mary Tyler Moore, the very first episode, and you'll know exactly why I wrote my book, exactly why I came on the scene talking about traditionalism, exactly because <laughs> you'll know, just you'll know. If you know, you know. Second question, what are your thoughts on getting back with an ex, a good ex? I got out of a beautiful relationship about one year ago. It lasted 10 months. It was a best relationship I have been in so far. He's a great guy. He made time for me, was kind to me, was consistent and was genuine. He called me every morning and every evening religiously. We were so compatible. I thought he was my husband. We took a break for one month and afterwards broke up because he realized that he didn't want marriage and kids as he, as he said before. We took a break for one month and afterwards he broke up and he quote unquote realized he didn't want marriage and kids as he said before. I'll come back to that line. I know exactly what's going on. He thought that would get in the way of the things that he wanted to do in his life. Uh-huh. He is an engineer. Oh, okay. I know exactly what's going on with him. And at that time he was working on getting his professional engineering license. Okay. I wish I could give you all the details. Uh, but long story short, he came back around like they always do after about four months after our breakup, apologizing and wanting to salvage the relationship. He realizes he was in the wrong and is still wanting to get back together. I was told, I have told him in order to get any commitment from me, uh, he would have to talk to my dad first again. Okay. Let me go line by line by line by line. I want you to download my app, girl, because I broke this all the way down because this would have answered your question. But I'm going to go ahead and answer it for everybody else on here. But those of you that are on the app, you know exactly what I'm getting ready to tell her. Never take back an ex who left you because they found something better. And in this case, he says he realized that he didn't want marriage and kids as he thought. Um, he thought that he would get, he thought that your relationship or marriage or going that direction would get in the way of his goals. Now, this particular situation, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt only because he says he's working on his professional engineering license, but I'm not going to give him that much leeway because when you've met the one, you don't let her go. And what has happened was he used the engineering license as an excuse. And I don't care what the men say in the chat. This was a flat out excuse to let you go. He found another woman he thought was a better option and she wasn't. And so now he's circling the block back to you. Now it's up to you whether you want to take him back or not. Because the reason why I say that is men can walk and chew gum at the same time. And the reason why I know that is because they tell women all the time, help build with me, help build with me. That means we're together building. So a man that says, well, I'm working on my license, I'm doing stuff and I don't want, to me, to me, that's a cop out. When you've met the one that you want to marry, you don't let her go. And so what this means is you were a better deal after the other person didn't pan out. So let me read that again. So, so other folks can hear what I'm talking about. We took a break for one month. And then afterwards we broke up because he quote unquote realized that he didn't want marriage and kids as he said before. In other words, he knew that your relationship was getting serious he, you were talking about that. He knew you wanted marriage and he found something that he thought was better and he wanted to explore that. So he pulled back from you, but he needed time to court this other person without the interruption of you. In other words, you and him had a routine going. You were probably seeing each other every day. If I'm right or wrong, let me know, but you're probably seeing each other on a regular basis. You're talking about marriage and he needed time to make a good impression on this other woman. 
and consistently seeing both of you, he wasn't going to be able to afford. He wasn't going to have the time. He needed to work on his engineering license. That part is true. But he can't work on his engineering license and court two women at the same time. So somebody had to go. And he thought he could level up with her. It didn't pan out. And I'm reading this. He thought that he would get a uh he thought that it would get in the way of things he wanted to do in his life. So he didn't break up with you because he had a lot on his plate. That's why I didn't give him that much leeway. Because you said he told you he thought that would get in the way of the things that he wanted to do in his life. Not share his life with you. His life. So now he's an engineer. But he wasn't then. He was working on his license. So that's why I didn't give him that much leeway. I wish I could give you all these. So do you understand what I'm saying there? That's up to you if you want to take him back. I highly admonish you to go listen to that uh, that that little courting advice that I gave you ladies about which exes to take back and why you can take them back or not. You can do what you want, but which exes will actually pan out the way. Now, in this particular situation, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. If a man leaves me, puts me on hold, leaves me, then comes back and says, oh, you were the greatest thing since sliced bread. Really? Okay, where's my diamond? Because I'm not going to come back to this relationship as a girlfriend. That's just, I'm not doing that. To come back, he wants to come back and resume where you all left off? No, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. So, like, again, that's up to you, but that's the best way to do a guy like that, that make him put up or shut up. And I know what some guys are thinking when they hear that. Oh, my God, you're forcing. No, I'm not. He left me for another situation. He just doesn't think you know or think you're smart enough to figure that out. But, yeah, he left you for another chick. It didn't pan out. Now he's back. So it's up to you whether you want to take him back or not. And personally, he wants to talk to your dad. You told him um, um, in order to get a commitment from you, he needs to talk to your dad. He needs to talk to your dad and give you a ring, period. So it's up to you if you want to marry him, if you want to consider him. Personally, a guy like that, I would make him jump through all kinds of hoops. I would just make him just do the most. Okay, next question. Um. Okay, so this lady sends me two photos of her. One is her brown skin. This is me, brown skin, and the ex. Okay. He used to make me feel like my looks aren't enough, but we still deal with each other. Okay. Let's read this. Oh, okay. She sent a picture of her and his ex-girlfriend. Okay. All right. I got you. Hi. I'd like to remain anonymous. I have a, a few questions, please. I'm dealing with a guy now. He is. He still is in contact with his ex. Red flag. Red flag. He expressed to me, unless they have children. Do they have children together? He expressed to me that he wants both of us, but I sent, sent want to be involved in that. Okay, so you don't want to be involved in that. I separated with myself and he started chasing. Okay, so you, you pulled back from him and then he started chasing you. Okay, how can I deal with this even though the sex is good? Stop having sex with him immediately. He's still talking to his ex. Red flag. And he gives me advice. Advice on what? Money and gifts when he can. Advice on what? The stock market? Real estate? What? He gives you gifts. What? Is he paying all your bills? Like, I mean, no. Stop having sex with him. Also, he preaches to me that I need to take care of myself and love myself and to not expect no man to take care of me. Okay, so he's telling you, that's his offer right there. He's telling you right there that those gifts and that money and all that stuff that you enjoy is going to go away. He's telling you right then and there, okay? But we have sex, but he's not affectionate as in want, as I want him to be. It's always sex, advice, talk on the phone, it's sex and advice talk on the phone. And it's very quick. I want more time. I'm confused. Okay. 
Does he want more time with you? Because it seems like he's rushing you off the phone. He's making minimal contact with you because he wants sex. This is how you do guys like this. If you really want to know the truth, I don't give you advice on this one. This is something you have to discover on your own. Close your legs. Stop sex. Stop sex, stop sex with him. And he will show his true colors. Okay? That's how you do guys like that. When you, you know, because if I tell you what to do, you're still kind of attached to him and you still have feelings for him. So anything I tell you is only going to push you further in his arms. So ladies, if you ever want to know where you stand with a man, close your legs. Okay. Ladies, he's, and he's trying to give this young lady a complex about herself because his ex looks completely different from him. He's trying to give her a complex and what he's trying to do, he's trying, can I be honest with you all? Can I, can I be real 110? Cause I'm not going to do a live next week. So let me, let me do my thing. He's trying to smut this girl out. That's what he's trying to do. That's why he keeps mentioning his ex. His ex was probably a freak because no guy who's trying to be successful with the next girl is mentioning his ex. He doesn't even want you to even think about his ex, ask questions about his ex. He don't want to eat you. To, he doesn't even want you to come close to that. So the fact that he's bringing her up and he's, <clears throat> excuse me, he's showing you who she is and all that. He's trying to smut you out. He's trying to get a threesome going if possible. And in the main, and in the, in the meantime, he's trying to take you down a peg or two by juxtaposing you two together. Look at her, look at you. He's trying to give you a complex. This guy is the dirtiest of the dirt, but you have to find that out for yourself. So I, I don't think you'll believe me because you have an attachment to him. So close your legs and he'll show you who he is. Okay. Next question, how can you become more submissive in marriage? I was raised watching my mother run the home. I've been working years to unlearn everything, but this is still an area uh, for improvement. So submission just means you're deferring to him. He is the head of household. So there's God, there's, there's Christ, there's the husband, there's the wife, and there's the children. So I look at marriage submission like a, a basketball team or a sports team okay so you're not live with me so i would say pick your favorite sports team and the general manager would be the husband the general manager would be the husband okay and the coach would be the wife and the players are the children okay that's how i look at marriage so if you look at it that way, you submit to him. The coach submits to the general manager all the time. The general manager um, makes sure that the stadium bills are paid. <laughs> make sure that when they have games, that the tickets are sold, that the marketing and advertising and um, um, affiliates and and the 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 news, uh, n the media is aware. Um, the sponsors, all of those things or handle all of the logistics, all of the behind the scenes things that the fans take for granted. The general manager handles that. The coach does not handle selling tickets. The coach does not handle the lights being on at the stadium, um, providing practice um, gear and practice areas for the team. The general manager worries about salaries and all of these things. The general manager is going to set up places for now who gets to talk to the media more the coach the wife that's who people see first is the wife her presentation how she speaks how she talks and people pay attention to like my favorite basketball team would be the lakers right people pay attention to the my all-time favorite team is is bill riley with jerry buss right uh, uh, not Bill Riley, um, Pat Riley, Pat Riley and Jerry Buss. It's always been my favorite team. That's, that's what it is. The Lakers, 1980s Lakers. So Pat Riley, everybody's paying attention to how Jerry Buss and Pat Riley get along. If they don't get along, there's problems. That team is going to have problems, right? When the back office, which is the general manager gets along with the coach, things operate a little bit more smoothly. Does that make sense? Okay. Does that make sense? So that's how 
a wife should show up in her marriage. You defer to the general manager. He's the general manager. That means the buck stops with him. There is no team without him. And when women step out of that and they believe I don't need the general manager, I'm the general manager as the coach. Or when the children step over the mother and go to the, that's a problem. We are a well-oiled machine. We are a unit. And submitting to him means that's more responsibility for him as well. So any man screaming and hollering about submission, he knows he has more responsibility with that. He has more responsibility with that with that submission because being a leader become uh the buck stops with you like president truman the buck stops with you so if you want submission you have to answer submission is just like adam and eve in the garden who did god speak to first and who did god come back to the garden and say i see you've been up to, sh to some shenanigans i told you not to do and adam pointed at eve what she said she at God said, wait, hold up, player. I was talking to you, not her, you. And Adam standing there looking like a dumb dummy, like a deer caught in the head, like, oh Lord, I'm naked in front of God. God was like, who told you you was naked? I didn't tell you you were naked. What you been doing? You been doing something. You been caught. Uh-huh. You been caught. That's submission. She submits to him, which she failed to do. And he submits to God, which he failed to do. In a marriage, you should be submitting to him. That means that your husband should be a, a, a good steward of your heart and of the home. The Bible holds the husband responsible for that family. And in his absence as well, people, men think that they get off the hook by not being there. No stupid fool. You are not off the hook. Because you're not there. You're not off the hook because you didn't raise those children. Have you lost your mind? God holds you responsible. You think it's all on women's shoulders that the community is crazy, that society is crazy. It's not all on women. God is looking at the men. Why aren't you ahead of this priesthood? And without that, there is no submission. If he is not the head, if he's doing what he's supposed to do and he's the head, you are supposed to submit. And ladies, those of you that are believers and you have a prayer life, you need to be praying for your husband anyway. Pray that he makes good decisions. Pray that he's a good leader. Pray that his love expands, his heart expands, that God gives him wisdom on how to lead the family. That's how you need to be praying. All the time, all the time. You don't have to be all loud and ostentatious with it, but you should be consistent with that prayer. Going before God often. God sent, God essence, she writes, what if you have lied a lot in the past? As it, is it any way to clean up and fix your image? I'm working on being more honest. Um, yeah, you just need to get a new man that doesn't know you've been lying. <laughs> yeah. So good for you. Good for you. You're saying, hey, I'm working on being honest. Hey, one step at a time. Good for you, sweetie. But you're going to need to get a good a new man who doesn't know you've been telling fatty goose, okay? <laughs> That's an old school word. Uh, you've been telling little, little, little lies, okay? You're going to have to get a new dude that does not know that, okay? And start from scratch. Does that make sense? Um, because once a man knows that you're dishonest, it's downhill from there. He doesn't, he will never trust you. And that's no way to have a relationship. And he's not going to give his best with you, which defeats the purpose of being with him. Like he's not going to show up as his best because he doesn't believe you. He will never be vulnerable with you. It's just, it's just downhill from there. It's just best that you work on that part of you and just go get another man and start out and do your best. The, uh, your future matters. Don't put it all in a man's hands is what I say. In other words, your future matters. And if he's not talking about the future with you, um, it's up to you to make a decision. Okay, he is not moving forward. It's time for me to do something else. Does that make sense, ladies? Um, 
Any more questions? Okay. Uh, Craven some told a man I like candles. He had me thinking they were for me. He said when I come over, never mind. Oh wow. Mm. Yeah, they do that. <laughs> Oh, Lacey says she has quality time quite a few hours a week uh, after 730. Good rest. Good, 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 good. You always need that, that, that time, that quality time with your husbands. Eek it out, ladies. Eek it out. Eek it, eek it, eek it. <laughs> Nostalgia TV. Hey, Mrs. Nicole, there's a guy I know from TikTok. I know it sounds childish, but I hang out in online communities a lot. There's nothing wrong with that. I really like him, but I'm not sure how to tell if he'd be interested or not. Um, does he talk about the kind of women that he likes? Is he involved? You know, is he dating somebody? You know, is he married? Eh? You know, kind of do your homework a little bit. And um, if you're a traditional woman, just kind of uh, send him messages you know, um, respond to his comments. I really like it. Try to become a mod. That gets you closer to him. Um, if you're not traditional, go ahead and send me an inbox. <laughs> hey, what's up? I, I really like your work. What made you go? What made you talk about that topic or what may ask him a question? No, um, say something, make a comment about something he said or did, then ask him a question. And then let it roll. And he'll get back to you. So again, if you're not traditional, uh, and in the traditional um, um, song and dance as a traditional woman, reach out to him, right? Um, some people say that's not, that's masculine. It's not masculine because what will happen is a lot of these guys don't even know you exist. And they don't know you exist until you send a message. Once he sends, a, once you send a message and he's interested, he's going to start calling you and start texting you. Now, is that a chance that he will sit back and let you pursue him? You run that risk. Yes. But if you're not a traditional woman, it doesn't matter to you anyway. But if you send him a message and make a comment about what he said, that's not pursuing him. You just make it a comment about what he said. He should respond to you. And then you can ask him a question after he responds to you. And then once he does that and you go, oh, okay, awesome. And then start liking all of this stuff. Start liking all of his videos, making comments on all his videos. He should get the hint. He should get the hint. Um, um okay. Wolf film. Hey, Nicole, I'm seeing a pattern with me and being passive about setting dates. They want to chat forever. Every day starting a new text conversation. I cut it short or stop responding, but what gives? Basically, what's happening is, um, it's two things could be going on. One is things have gotten so, people have just gotten lazy with social media that they think they can carry on an entire conversation in chat. And I can tell you right now, this cannot be a Generation Xer. Generation Xers, we love the phone. We want to get in front of you. Uh-uh, we're not doing that. Even if it's long distance, we're doing some FaceTime, video something. <laughs> so I know this has to be a millennial or a Z because we don't do that texting for too long. Uh, even the Generation X guys, if he does that, he's weird and he just wants sex. Generation X guys want to be in front of you. So if you meet a Generation X guys, uh, ladies, if you meet a Generation X man and he does not want to date you, like get on the phone with you and hear your voice and call you and get a video chat or go out on a date, he's full of crap. Leave him where he is. I'm telling you, Generation X men are very, they, even if they didn't have a dad in a home, even if they are socially awkward, they're still more social than some of these young folks. I'm telling you. Don't buy that from, gen do not accept that from Generation Xers. Now, if he's a millennial or a Z, it's quite possible he's socially awkward. It's quite possibly he's scared or it's quite possibly he's full of crap. 
So what you do is you say, hey, what's with all this chatting on the, you know, what's with all this chatting? I don't usually do all this. Here, why don't you just call me? That's how you do that. If he doesn't call and he's dragging his feet after that, leave him where he is. He doesn't want anything seriously. Because what has happened is a lot of these women that's, that are taking these you know, I got flued out. I went to go see this guy. I'm taking these vacations and all these little pictures they take on these weekend trips. A lot of that stuff was conducted through chat. You do understand that, ladies, right? All they did was do a little chat. Hey, what's your name? What's your uh, your uh, what's your number? What information do I give to the to the airlines? Boom, bought a plane ticket. She flies out there. They do whatever. She flies back. All of this was chat. That's how simple things have gotten. And in Atlanta, if I could just tell the truth right up and through here, in Atlanta, the guys were, and I'm, I didn't know women were giving it up this easily, y'all. It was some ladies in Atlanta that was letting guys send them Uber. <laughs> They were taking Ubers to guys' houses, smashing, and then taking an Uber back home. The guys, if he was really nice, he got you an Uber. Excuse me? <laughs> All right. Y'all cannot be giving it up this easily. Please tell me. Please tell me. No, don't tell me because I already know. I already know. I already know. And that could just be Atlanta. Okay, I know. Atlanta's different. I know. But the fact that they're just getting an Uber and, and, and the person that said this, she was like, and he was real nice. He got me an Uber. What? You gave it up for an Uber ride? But anyway, what I'm saying is... He could be full of crap. So say, you know, why don't you, uh, I, I don't understand all this chit chatting. It's kind of childish. You want to just give me a call or, Hey, I'm busy and I can't really text. Can you just call me and be done with it? Okay. And if he doesn't want to call you at that point, leave him where he is. Thank you for posting that, um, that link. I appreciate that. Jess, thank you for the super chat. Why are men claiming they want traditional women, but wife up sluts? I've cooked and cleaned for years, but didn't get the ring. Uh, this is what needs to happen. Um, you need to state what it is. And thank you for your question and your super chat, sweetie. State what it is that you want. I'm looking for a serious relationship that could lead to marriage. Let him know that you are traditional and scope it out and see if he's traditional because traditional men don't date forever and traditional men do not marry sluts period and i know i know what it is you see celebrities and they but they're not traditional necessarily so just because a man is paying all the bills sometimes doesn't mean he's traditional so a lot of times you see because that's not the be all to end all to traditional structure. So a lot of times when you see, I know there's this heavy emphasis on a man paying all the bills and being a provider, but that's not the be all and end all to traditional structure. So what you see a lot of times is you see a man paying the bills and you see a woman being promiscuous. Uh, uh, you know, what we talked about earlier, the stay, stay at home girlfriends and stuff like that. You see a lot of that, not to say that they are sluts, but you see a lot of that. And what I'm telling you is that doesn't make them traditional. Okay. Because traditional men marry traditional women because they are really traditional. And if he's not if he, if you feel like there was, this is this place for you because this is where the good girls reside. And if you feel like they're wifing up sluts, those weren't the guys for you. They were looking for a certain type of woman. And please understand, a lot of times men love ostentatious women. They love women that are, you know, free sex, free spirit. They love that. And that's what happens is they end up in that those relationships end up falling apart. And of course, they'll give you that one outlier relationship, that one in a a quadrillion relationship that last she was a free spirit and slept with everybody and they stayed married to for 90 years right okay um <laughs> don't use that as the law the exception is the rule and the exception and the rule is that promiscuous women don't make good wives especially to traditional men the whole point of traditionalism is modesty and raising a family and um modest and and christ-like living okay contrary to what you all hear on ig 
traditionalism is rooted in Christian values. And the fact that he would marry a woman that's um, promiscuous tells you everything you need to know about him. When men get online talking about good girls need to be more like hoes and all this other foolishness. It tells me everything I need to know. It tells me what kind of women they're dating. It tells me what kind of man he is. It tells me what kind of money he has. I uh, don't care. A man that has true money, good money is not risking that with a woman that he cannot trust period. And so for him to put all of his eggs in a basket of a slut lets me know everything I need to know. It lets me know his money is not as long as he claims it is. It lets me know that he does not appreciate good women. It lets me know he's possibly not a good man. It lets me know everything I need to know. Good girls that are listening to me and listen to me good. You do not come off your square because the men are passing you up. Those men were never meant to be your husband. I'm speaking for every good girl out there because I used to be her. I used to be, I like him. And he just overlooked. And I used to think it was my looks. I used to think, oh, it's because um all kinds of stuff. I used to think everything. Because I know what you're doing. Oh, it's because I'm dark skinned. Oh, it's because I'm older. Oh, it's because it's because I'm Latina. Oh, it's because I'm Asian. Oh, it's uh, you're thinking every single thing that has nothing to do with the oh, I'm not pretty enough. I'm not thin enough. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the fact that he is not ready for you. And he's doing you a favor. So accept the favor. That's the, okay. Does that make sense? <clears throat> And I love what he says here. Mackie says, unfortunately, many of the men claiming they want traditional wives seem unwilling to acquire the skills and incomes <laughs> required to provide for a wife and family as a sole provider. Right on. Right on. That's, that's what it is. And you're going to see a lot of that. Um, so, ladies... Good girls listening to me and every kind of other woman listening to me. If a man passes you over, he did you a favor. Cool. Cool. It's okay. I will be okay. There will be another man. I promise you. Miss Witt says, hey, Miss Nicole, a complex question here. How did you vet immigrant men from another country to know it's not just for citizenship? Ooh. Tell them you won't get them citizenship. <laughs> tell them you don't want to get married nah you can't do that um it's really no way of knowing that but what you could do is go back to his homeland and kind of if he's if he talks about his family saying i want to bring my family over here i want to you know move my family chances are he's trying to get a green card to stay if he's always constantly talking about money, he's always talking about what you can do for him. It, chances are he's trying to get a green card. Um, men who are set up financially and um or have dual uh most of them have dual in um dual citizenships. Do you think Portia's husband needs her to get him a green card? Do you think you, you understand where I'm going with this ladies when a man is thorough and he doesn't need you, he's not going to ask you for a green card. He's just, it's just not, he's not going to ask you for citizenship. That's just not, he has that. He either is doing a dual citizenship or he does not want to give up his citizenship in his home. But if he brings it up, he, he wants it. If he talks a lot about his, his family, I want to bring my mama, my daddy, my grandma, my dog, my cat, my pet mouse he wants to bring all these people over to the u.s yeah he's going to need you to do that so um and it could be real love even though he wants a citizenship it could be i know somebody who married um a man from the netherlands and they are still married so it just just depends. It's just a gamble. You have to, t it's really a gamble, but those are some metrics you can use to kind of gauge like, how's his money going? You know, how did he get to the United States? Was he a college student or he just migrated over here, just caught a flight and just never left? Like what, how did he get here? What's the purpose behind it? What does he do for a living? Does he own a own, does he own a business? Because typically businessmen don't need you for citizenship. 
they're dual citizenship people anyway. Does that make sense? They're dual citizens anyway. Does that make sense? So I'm not an expert on that. My best friend is, but, um, and Tony's not here, but, um, that's what I would use is, Hey, is he talking about those extended family? Oh, I got to bring my mama over here. My pet Mickey Mouse, my dog, uh, my cat, all these people. He has to bring these people over. Chances are he's trying to stay. He wants to be a citizen and he's going to be asking you to help. Latina Jones. Hello. If he isn't moving forward like an engagement, how do I begin to uninvest emotionally? Girlfriend of one year and five months. I'm losing hope in him. I just turned 32. Hopefully you don't live together because if you live together, that would be the first step. Just let him know, you know, um, I don't know how often you're having these conversations with him, but just, you can kind of say, you know, is marriage in the forecast for you? And I know you have already decided whether you see me as a wife or not. I just, I'm, I just need to know what your decision is. That's a unique way to get it out of him. Look, I know you've made the decision about me already. Okay. We've been together for a year and five months. I'm just asking you to tell me what your decision was. He's going to start hemming and a hawing and a young, 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 young. You've been listening to that, Nicole. She be talking about marriage, young, young, young. whatever. Okay. That, that answers your question <laughs> because men who want to get married, don't go, I'm going to start speaking a different language because you are start talking about marriage. <laughs> what? Speak English. What are you talking about? All because you said the word marriage, like it shouldn't freak him out that you're talking about marriage, period. No shade to any dialect, but that's how men sound. Wah, 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 wah. What did you just say? I just asked you about marriage. I, I know you know if you see me as a wife and I'm just asking you to tell me what that decision is. And if he's still a him and a hind, that's fine. Just go, well, I think it's a, bit, a good idea that we not see each other until you're clear. You have to have discipline in order to become a wife. The key to becoming a wife is being able to let leave him where he stands. That's the key to becoming a wife is leave him where he stands. And I have movies on the app that help you with this process with creative ways of getting a man to propose to you. Just go to my app, ladies. Go to the app. I promise you. Creative ways to get that proposal if he wants to propose. Unique ways that it's not going to feel like pulling teeth. It's not going to feel like duress. It's not going to feel like you're coercing him. It just pulls it out of him. But I highly recommend after a year and five months, you start, you're 32 you got to date stealthily. Oh, okay. He's had a year of my life and he doesn't know whether he wants it. Some guys are just slow. And here's another thing. Um, and I've been listening to different people and a lot of guys are saying that they're not, they're not getting married unless they've dated you at least two years. Did you hear what I said? Ladies, a lot of guys are saying they're not even thinking about marriage until they've dated you two years. Now they know whether they wanna marry you or not. If they see you as wife material way before two years, but they're not going to, they're not going to pop the question under two years. So that's why I tell you ladies to try to get married as early as possible because they're gonna try to get two years out of you, which I don't recommend, especially if you're hot, you gotta go on. At 32 years old, you've given him a year. He's had ample time to decide on you. He's had four seasons to decide on you and, but I wouldn't just throw in the towel yet. I would see, is he talking about marriage? Is he, you know, what about his family? Are the people in his family married? What's his position on marriage? Does he start having convulsions when you talk about marriage? Um, does he want children? Does he have children? Has he been married before? All of this stuff plays into his time frame. And if the answer is no, 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 no to all those questions, you got a long road ahead of you because he is not in a rush, especially if he was raised by a single mom. Um, he did not see his parents married, that sort of thing. He's probably going to take his time. And I mean, slow, 
turtle style. Yeah. Some guys, no. Like guys that have been in the military, they tend to court uh, fairly quickly. Guys that are successful don't tend to date forever. They don't. And traditional men, they don't tend to date forever. So if you come across a guy like this, it's been a year and five months, I wouldn't say date him, um, um, get rid of him right away. What I would say is take a look at your calendar, get a physical calendar so you can see it. Get a physical calendar. I want you to circle the date on your calendar that past, uh, if we date to this point and he hasn't proposed marriage by this date, I'm out and stick to that date. Every lady, if you, every lady listening to me on the sound of my voice, you're single, you're dating a guy, pull out the calendar. I don't care. I, I just met him, Mr. I don't care. Pull out the calendar. Um, pick a date on the calendar. If he hasn't proposed by that date, you're out. Deuces. And, and I mean, you'll know if you're headed that direction because he's going to start talking about marriage. You can kind of feel it in your gut. Like you're exclusive, he's moving forward, he's not afraid of vulnerability, he's emotionally aware, he's talking about marriage, you're moving forward. If by that date he hasn't asked you to marry him, that's not the time to negotiate. Nope, 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 nope. That's the time you pack up, you leave. And I mean, pack up emotionally, pack up relationship, you're done. Well, what's going on? Why you on top? Uh, well... I want to get married and I want to have children and I'm not getting any younger and I appreciate the time that we had together. You're an awesome guy, but I want to get married and I don't want to pressure you. Uh, it's no longer fun for me and I wish you the best. Peace, buddy. And leave him where he stands. I guarantee you he'll, he'll, uh, uh, you listening to that marriage people. You listening to social media. You listen to all these people, whatever. I want to get married and we've been dating X amount of time and it's been awesome. It's been great, but I'm, I'm ready to get married. So I'm a grown woman. I'm a grown woman. I'm not a teenager. I'm grown. Grown women get married and have babies. That's what we do. Teenagers date forever. That's literally what I was saying. Teenagers date forever. Animals mate, humans marry. I'm not a teenager. I'm not on a varsity teenage, you know, teen, a chilling squad waiting for the, the captain of the football team to get done with the game. I'm a grown woman and I'm ready to have a baby. I'm ready to start my family. I want a husband. I want a family. I want my own house. I want to cook for my family. I want to start a family. And if that's not you, that's cool. Um, you've dated long enough to know whether that's me for you. Well, I don't, I don't know for sure. Well, I tell you what, maybe time apart will help clarify things for you. And you close those legs. And when you go back to him and he hasn't given you what you want, then it's no point in getting back to him. If he doesn't come back with a ring, then leave him where he stands. Now, if you want the time frame by which to do all of that, you need me as your personal mentor so we can get on down to the nitty gritty so I can tell you what day and what time and how to do it and how to execute it and what to say when he comes back and how to get the ring. All right, Nostalgia T, he's single. I think he flirts with me, but it's hard to tell for me. Yes, I'll try to become a mod because I'm a mod in his friend's chat. There you go. Become a mod, get close to him, help him out, um, send him links to articles and things that will help his platform. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I was, uh, when I was, um, uh, and I'm still cool with him now with Austin and I would, it would, we would laugh in the back chat, just so you all know, we would laugh in the back chat at all the females that had a problem with me working with him. And I'm just like, all they had to do was pour into what you're doing. Like I'm sitting up here sending you articles and sending you, oh, you should talk about this. Why can't they inbox you? Why can't they send you links to talk about stuff? That would be their way into conversing with you. Yeah, Nicole, I don't know. That's me and Austin would laugh about that all the time. He'd be like, I don't know why these women cop an attitude with you. Like they could just send me a message. It's down to earth as Austin is. I don't know why you didn't do that anyway. I'm like, why be mad at me? This is my personality. I'm going to always get a man to talk to me. I, but that's because that's how I am. Like, Hey bro, look, Hey, I saw this article. You should, this would be a good topic for you to talk about. You should talk about that. 
or I just sent him a link to an article the other day about he, what he should do to go live on TikTok. Somebody, a woman that has a crush on him can do that. I don't have a crush on him. He's like my son. Are you serious? Send him a link if you want to talk. You know what I'm saying? I'm just using him as an example. But that's how you get close to people is like showing your value to him. Right? Uh, mm, that's absolutely true. Meeting a man's family will tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> Latina, she says, if he isn't moving forward, engagement. Oh, okay. I answered that. Okay. Uh, okay. Kiana. Hi, Nicole. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, Latina, hopefully that helped. But yeah, just mark that on the calendar. Hey, look, this is what's what. Well, what's wrong with you? You're acting funny style. And let him know, look, I want to get married. I want to start a family. I'm not feeling desperate. I'm not desperate. But this is what women do. We get married and we have babies. There's nothing desperate about that. Well, you're just in the danger zone. You, you can be right on that, but I'm still a woman and I still... You can't fuss at women about not wanting to get married and have babies. And then when we want to get married and have babies, you shame, shame us for it. You can't have it both ways. So how it is now, how it stands now is I'm this age and it has nothing to do with you. This is all me. I've enjoyed my time with you, but I don't want to pressure you into something you don't want to do. And so I think it's best that I go and I prepare myself for a man that is ready for marriage. Goodbye, friend, buddy. And so he'll try to come around so he can still sleep with you and things like that. And you close a little, those pretty little legs until he comes back with a ring. If you want to know how to get him to come back with a ring, you need to work with me. Kiana Note, she says, hi, Nicole. I'm currently in a committed relationship, but when we're not physically together, we can go all day or even multiple days without talking to me and the relationship is long distance. Red flag. If you're long distance, you need to be talking every single day. Matter of fact, any new relationship, you should be talking every single day. No less than 45 minutes. 45 minutes is um, on his way home. It's right before he gets goes to bed, right before dinner. Um, if you're long distance, there's no reason why he can't talk to you. What is he doing? Who is he with? Why can't he FaceTime you? You know what I mean? Why can't you all meet on a Zoom or something like that? There's all kinds of creative ways to meet and meet and talk. Okay. So if he's not making the effort to do that, he's letting you know everything you need to know about what he is. Um, and is he, how committed is he? So what you would do is communicate this to him. I'm, I'm, you know, I want to talk to you about something and this is not, I'm not accusing you of anything. This is just me talking about me and where I am. I feel that if we are committed, I need more connection with you, more communication with you right now. I feel like this isn't enough for me to be committed. It's enough for me to talk to you and it's enough for you to be my buddy, but it's not enough for me to be committed. Like I'm taking myself off the market for someone I only talk to once a week and say it just like that. I'm taking myself like I'm taking myself off the market <laughs> to, for someone I only speak with once a week. Does that make sense to you? Well, I'm busy. Well, in committed relationships in order for us to go deeper and get to know each other and grow, we need to spend time together. And since we can't physically do that, we need to do that over the phone. What do you think about that? Say it just like that. What do you think about that? You have to ask him, what does he think about that at the end? Let him speak. Don't interrupt. Just let pause and be silent. Do not put words in his mouth. Do not talk. Do not speak. Let him speak. Don't interrupt. Just sit there. And he'll go, hello? Yes, I'm waiting for your response. And he'll say what he needs to say. He needs to be held responsible for not calling you. Multiple days, that's not a committed relationship. That's a phone pal. I don't need a phone pal. I need a grown man that wants to talk to me. What's up? Like, that's how you move a relationship forward. Just for frame of reference, Tony and I spoke for at least two hours a day 
until we got married, at least. And he was in Ohio. I was in Atlanta. And we made an effort uh, to speak. And some days I know he was dead tired from work. I know he was. He was falling asleep. I'd be talking, yada, yada, yada. Tony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm up. I'm up. <laughs> but I appreciated his effort. You understand what I mean? Ladies, you want, so what I'm saying is when it's long distance, you have to put in that time to speak, period. Okay. Otherwise, that's not a commitment. That's a phone pal. You don't need phone pals. You're a grown woman. Ooh, listen. Okay. All right. I think I've reached the end of my questions. Let me go back to IG, uh, IG right quick. And then this will conclude it after this. She wrote me a follow-up. She says, thank you for your response, Mrs. Nicole. I heard your questions during the live, and I'd like to answer them and elaborate on my ex situation. So this is the lady. Uh, okay. Uh, this is the lady that I read her email about moving out on her own since she's only forgot what she said how old she was she's 26 so this is the young lady that asked me about moving out on her own so this is her reply she said I'd like to work part-time when I'm married I practice that even now I am not about that full-time lifestyle I enjoy my freedom and I want to make room for my family and my other passions good good if it is necessary I'm willing to contribute 25 to 30 percent to household bills expenses groceries decor minor details um working part-time I would say you will contribute 10 to 20 percent part-time you don't make any money I wouldn't commit to anything more than 20% as part-time. My ex was already an engineer, uh, but he simply wanted his professional license. Oh, okay. Okay, so he was already an engineer. And he, oh, okay. All right. Um, a lot of guys, when they get successful, they start smelling themselves and they start trying to get women on a rotation because now they are um successful and so now they understand this is why and can i tell you a secret about men ladies really quick a lot of guys they always go in on men that are unproductive but guys that are halfway decent looking professional and have a little money in their pockets they love pookies and ray rays they love losers they love dusties they love it when you talk about dusties because when they when they show up they get to go hey i'm none of those things look at me i have a degree look at me i have a good job i have a little money in my pocket i'm not abusive i don't have a criminal record they love it when you talk about um pookie and ray ray and you know, uh, trailer park trad. They love it when you talk about them because then they get to juxtapose themselves against trailer park Chad and Pokey and Ray Ray. But guess what? They're not going to treat you any different. Well, they might treat you a little bit better, but not a whole lot. They don't have any more plans for you than trailer park trad and Pokey and Ray Ray. They have no more to give you than they do. They have no plans to do more. They just like juxtaposing themselves against those guys to make you lower your defenses. And they don't want you to know that. But I love it when professional guys always harping on Pookie and Ray Ray and Trailer Park Chad. All they want you to do, and they love to hear women going in on Trailer Park Chad. Chad, he does this. He's in and out of jail. I got to come up with bail money. He doesn't want to get. They love it when y'all talk about that. So he gets to show up and go, hey, I don't have a criminal record. I have a, I have a degree. I have money. I have this and that. And then you go, ooh, I met my Mr. Ray. Right. Ooh, and then pennies go to flying and you get to making decisions and thinking twice later and then he's like whoa bang I didn't even have to work hard to get the draws all I had to do was tell her that I'm a professional and boom and a lot of guys who are professional they're getting this off because a lot of women don't come across professional guys that look half decent you you saw you heard me read that article earlier so a lot of guys are taking advantage of that. 
Okay, so uh, he, she goes on to say, I'm currently going on dates with other men, and I think he suspects that because I'm single after all. When we first started dating, he knew other men were taking me out, and after he realized that he started booking dates in advance. As an older lady to a younger woman, let me tell you something. You're 26. You're in the prime of your life. You do not wait on a man. Let me say that again. I'm in my I'm in my 40s, deep in my 40s. And let me tell you something. As an older woman speaking to a younger woman, you do not put your life on hold for a man. Uh, you see the screen? You see what that says? You do not do it ever. If he is not actively courting you, we, we ain't, there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> I got a date tonight. I'm going to talk to you later. I got something to do. Leave him on red. Just don't even read his text. Change this is what you do. Change the settings. If you have an iPhone, change the settings to where they can tell when you've read the message and leave him on read. <laughs> That's how you do that. My thoughts were similar to yours. I suspected he may have had his eye on someone else. He does have a woman friend who he works with. They have contact outside of work, and his family knows her. I have always side hide side-eyed her um she definitely has influence with him for sure i don't know how deep it is but don't make a big deal out of it because you don't know the deal and you don't want to give her more importance than she really has um and so just don't mention it just pay attention to it okay or was getting cold feet because of how fast and easy we were moving along he didn't get cold feet when a man finds a woman that he wants, he does not let her go. Men are territorial, okay? Never forget that. Men are territorial and they're jealous. They like to put that on women. Men are territorial and they do not want another man touching the woman he has claimed, okay? So he didn't get scared. Now, he might get cold feet right before he says, I do, but he's still going to say, I do, okay? <laughs> he mentioned he was also afraid because he had gotten cheated on in the past by his ex a few years. He is turning 30 this month. Okay, let me play this out. So what had happened was, see, you got to understand. See, my ex, she cheated on me. And so, you know, I just be getting scared because you're 26 and so you could break my heart. You could totally shatter my heart. Whatever. Do you hear? <laughs> Girl, no. <laughs> So she cheated on you, but you still are real chum chummy with your friend at work. So obviously, um, you don't have problems with women in that area. You don't have problems making with friends with women. Give me a break. We don't get out of here with that foolishness. So she goes on to say, I break up truly helped me to realize that the girlfriend title means nothing. And since then I have changed my dating approach. I won't jump into another relationship with him or anyone. It needs to be a short courtship leading to a proposal and marriage or nothing. I will never be a man's girlfriend again. And I do plan to make him jump through hoops in the kindest, most feminine way. There you go, girl. I have mentioned moving away to Texas to him. And his response was, quote unquote, he may come along because he quote, can't have me that far away. Um, that's a good thing. That's another way to get a man to propose is tell him you're moving and like, like mean it. Um, I'm thinking about moving away. And if he says I'll come with you and he doesn't freeze up or get scared or anything like that, he doesn't, he's, he's making an offer. This dude said, I'm going to come with you. Wait, you're going to follow me? Wow, that's real masculine. You're going to follow a 26-year-old. That's that's what you're telling me? That's what be, that, that is what will be going through my mind. So I'm 26, you're 30. And you're going to follow a 26-year-old woman? Really? No. Um, <laughs> no. If he wants you, he's going to quickly solidify what you and him have going on before you leave. Does that make sense? Shout out to Shanita. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, the super sticker. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, LJL. I recently did a video chart with a long-term friend. However, I'm starting to have feelings. Is it possible to transition? 
Um, you did a video chat with a long-term friend and you're starting to have feelings with him. Yeah, sure. Is there a romantic undertone? Is there chemistry? Does he seem like he likes you? What's going on? And if so, then start flirting. You know how to flirt. Does that make sense, ladies? All right, this has been a long one, but um, I felt this was um, needed. It was a great conversation. Lo oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me go to IG before they scream my head off. Let me go to IG. Let me make sure I answered everything over there. Uh, let's see here. Really quick. Hope thank you guys for hanging out. Um, but I do have a couple of more questions. So if y'all want to hang out a little bit longer, feel free. Uh, she says, in your opinion, what does a traditional man think about a 30 year old woman taking salsa classes? Nothing. He thinks it's sexy. I'm a Christian single 30 year old woman and used to take dancing classes in my early teens and miss it. So I'm considering taking salsa classes at a dance school to improve my social skills, especially when dancing salsa with men and have a fun hobby once a week. Very good. Proud of you. Excellent. I want to become a wife and a mother in the near future in one to two years. And I want to ask if traditional men would see salsa dancing as a red flag hobby or not. Thank you. No, twerking is a red flag. Salsa is sexy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, if you said twerking, going to the club to get on the pole, I would have said, eh, we got some work to do. But um, salsa is sexy and it actually mimics men and women, the masculine and the feminine. So I think that's my last question. I thought I had two more. These are just regular messages. So she's typing. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me, ladies. I appreciate each and every one of you and fellas. And if this was fun, I think we should do a marriageability room, maybe not in February, but maybe in March sometime. Um, you're welcome for the answer, sweetie. No problem. Salsa is sexy. And, and shout out to her, that young lady. Salsa is dance. Taking a dance class is a very good hobby now if you tell them you were pole dancing that would be something different but <laughs> salsa dancing um what's another dance where my dance people um all you know doing the charleston and all those other dances and so even if you said an r&b class that might be pushing it but even if you did it's still it, it but it, now if you were twerking you going to the club you turning up you know all, salsa and Bacada. Okay, good. Um, those are good. Those are good. So, um, swing dancing. Thank you. All of that. That's good. All of that's good. Understanding. And sometimes I look at dancing stuff on YouTube. Dancing actually mimics, uh, dancing actually mimics the masculine and the feminine because the young lady that asked me about submission that's exactly how the relationship runs smoothly he makes a move you answer he makes a move you answer that's what dancing is all about once you study swing and salsa and it's another one that i studied for uh i can't remember the name of it not belly belly he's ballroom dancing ballroom i don't know why i couldn't think of that ballroom dancing by the way ladies that are on my app um i've updated um it's events coming up ballet is good ballet is good uh events are coming up gala season is coming up you need to take your ballroom classes i have a lady that follows me on facebook she's in south carolina she teaches dance ladies get your ballroom dancing Oh, you can't go to these galas and you don't know how to dance. Ballroom dancing. Practice your ballroom dancing and your swing. Okay. Swing is good to know because in these galas, every now and then they might throw in a swing. Uh might throw in some um buddy, buddy, uh, Benny Goodman and some um some stuff like that. Um, some swing jazz. Every now and then. So you always want to have your swing skills up. I can do swing and I've practiced. Um, I'm good at ballroom and I'm good at swing. So, because I, you never know. <laughs> 
and I can I can dance to R and B too if I need to do that too. I can I can do it all. I just don't do R and B anymore, but I do know how to do it. Belly dancing, you definitely need to learn how to do that for your husband. Okay. <laughs> But thank you all for hanging out with me. Ladies, download the app. Download Feminine Elite Society app on Apple and Google. Try it out for a month and see if you like it. Gala season is coming up. You need to know what's coming up, what to wear, where to, where to go. I have all kinds of cities in there, all kinds of stuff. And if you're in Texas, ladies, that's all I'm going to say. Texas, um, Oklahoma. Yes, Oklahoma, um, New York, uh, just everywhere. D.C. I need to find some things in Michigan. The stuff I saw in Michigan, I, I wasn't too pleased with. So I may need to go to a different area in Michigan. But um, California, tons of stuff coming up. Tons of stuff. Yes, somebody's on the app. Hey, E, know what's up. Yes. The old men will be there, baby. Yes, ma'am. The old men and the cattle men. AE has been on the app, ladies. I'm telling you. So um, that's what's going on. So download the app. Meet us over there. If you want to know about the Good Girl Method, the Alluring Wives course, the Finishing School, all of that stuff will be coming up. Just go to Mrs. Nicole Michelle dot com and we will be um you can get on the wait list a short wait list it's not going to be months and months and months and a bunch of emails no it's it's going to send you i'm going to send you an email it's ready it's let's go let's get it <laughs> so you can get it ease i'm not going to make you wait years and years and years for stuff because i feel like Marriage is something that you can't wait on. And I don't see the point in making making you wait months and months and months for something that you need right now. So if you want it, you go buy it. Because I'm the type of person when I want something, I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. It doesn't make me want it more because I have to wait. It just makes me irritated. And I'll get it, but then I'm already mad because I had to wait that long. I just if I had the money and I want it, I want it now. And so that's how I set my business up. If somebody wants something, it's especially when we talk about marriage, especially when we talk about mentoring ship, mentorship, you need me to answer questions. You need me to be on call. You don't want to wait for months and months and months to talk to me and, and get access to material. Like that's stupid. I'm not doing that here. Um, maybe down the road years from now, I might implement that business model, but I don't see that point now because I know women need to get married and they need information right now. So, um, look, <laughs> Lacey said me too. I cannot stand that. Uh, <laughs> like, is it available now? Don't tell me it is. I, I hate it when I hit something that says sold out that, that irritates my soul. It doesn't make me want it more. It doesn't it has the adverse effect with me. Especially when I know that they're playing the scarcity trick with you. Like, oh, you better get it now because um, in two days, this digital product would not be available. It's digital. <laughs> it's digital. Stop it. So I believe, <laughs> I believe in making stuff available. Just if you want it and you can pay for it, go for it. It's there. So get on the um, email list for that. And that's just a list that I know that these people are ready for the product. That's all it is. It's not some to make you wait months and weeks at a time. I will send you the email. Boom. It's available and we're off to the races. So with that being said, thank you so, so very much. I am going to make me some cabbage today for my family. I have to feed them. And I think I'm going to make some cabbage and you all, I bought some lima beans and I'm going to make lima beans, not today, but I think I'm going to make some lima beans with smoked turkey in them later this week. I have a taste for some beans and my father-in-law makes the best beans, but he's not here in Ohio. So therefore it's on me to make my husband some beans. And I think I'm going to make some lima beans. I haven't done that. Um, done black eyed peas but we haven't done lima beans so we're going to do that not today i think i'm going to do cabbage today we're going to do lima beans and something like that 
and then I think I'm gonna make me a meatloaf not today but another day um and things like that so ladies be safe out here be sweet and go back and listen to this live because sometimes you can find the answer to your question in the lives I know it was long but sometimes you gotta do these long shows sometimes so that um you can get all the information and i don't have a problem with that somebody said cabbage and bacon from virgil's in atlanta uh oh. <laughs> atlanta has some of the best seaf uh soul food places i could totally be um nothing but fruits and veggie person in atlanta because um right before my wedding all i did was eat vegetables and fruits her Sasha shout out to her and that the weight just fell off of me and I didn't eat any meat and it was thanks to those soul food places shout out to Pascal's and shout out to what's the other place Pascal's Q time it's another place busy bees busy bees I ate those two. <laughs> all I ate was their sides and I was so full and I, that weight just fell off of me because you could just eat and eat and eat because it's vegetables. And um, it was just so good. So shout out to Busy Bees. If you're ever in Atlanta, go to Busy Bees. But anyway, thank you so much, ladies and a few gentlemen that watch. Remember, I love you and Jesus Christ loves you. And until the next time, keep the 